I don't know. I don't know. Oh, now I want to scream, scream at Erudite. I just want to scream at Erudite. Destiny's yes. words would trigger me. Right. right? If I date, if I was with Destiny, that would be very unnerving for me to hear from a sexual partner. We have to be able to rank trauma. You understand that, right? As a diagnostician. Sure. No, you gotta either agree or disagree with that. If you feel like I said something that was imprecise or incorrect, then say like, oh, like you said this, it was wrong. I didn't feel in any way like you were rude to me on that stream. Okay, hold on. I, wait, 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 mm -hmm. hold on. I just want to go back to completely yeah. disagree with what you just said that I agree now that I don't agree that I said or did anything wrong at all. Yes. Okay, so that doesn't, that's where we that disagree. doesn't, hold on. Hello, Hello Habibi. I will punish you every Bastion time. Hi, what's up? Hi, Chad was lying. They said you didn't want to talk to me, but you'll talk to me. I always talk. I love talking. How's it going? Good. I just want to say, hey, sorry I was in my fifis that day, but also, I just think you're wrong. <laughs> but also, I think you're right that everyone is having different experiences with these things. Um, I definitely misunderstood what you meant about getting jumped. So I definitely just want to clarify it to my chat that I made that mistake. I thought you were talking about just getting jumped, but I think you were talking about like getting jumped and it leading to severe trauma, like a uh, bodily hurt or something. I mean, that's generally what getting jumped means, right? Well, that's the problem is like, again, my brother's been jumped. Nobody liked that example, but he has by definition been jumped and he just saw it as another fight. So I'm not sure what you mean when you say getting jumped. Um, so what everybody means when we say getting jumped is getting jumped nope. is everyone, when- Everyone, stop. You did not just say for 8 billion people on the planet what yep. everyone well, means. Well, I, I am, because getting into a fight is not getting jumped. No, if you're using it that way, you're just wrong, right? Getting jumped is usually somebody ambushes you or in a place where you're not expecting to fight, somebody like takes advantage of the situation and attacks you. That's getting jumped. Getting jumped isn't like I, a guy at the bar was talking shit and we decided to go outside and, you know, sell things or whatever. That's you know, not I what happened. I, okay. Like I said, I give you an example. Sure. Of my brother did not see it coming. They were at a gas station. Yeah, so that's getting and jumped. all yeah. of a sudden, but he does not consider it mm -hmm. a PTC, PTSD inducing event. He considers it another fight. Yeah, that's fine. I'm, so I'm sure there's a lot of people that have had like traumatic events that they don't consider traumatic events and they consider it right. a whatever thing. Yeah, of course. Same with Ray. I understand from your perspective, maybe <clears throat> there's a reality in which you're a raped and it's not traumatic. Um, and that's a possibility. Yeah, sure. Pro probably for almost any event, there's probably Right. Think people that Those get tra have tra uh, traumatic response and people that don't have traumatic responses, sure. Some people go to right. war and kill five people and they're fine. Other people go to war and have a friend killed and it's like the end of the world for them. They're like PTSD for the rest of their life. It just, yeah. Absolutely. Like, sure. So again, and maybe I misunderstood your initial point in the conversation and that's my bad, but I felt like it's, it's a much more nuanced and I felt like you were kind of hoping for a specific answer. I'm not hoping for I anything. I think that questioning it, period, triggers a lot of people because there's like an, an expected response where it has to be universally reinforcing whatever the current, I guess, like pop view is of everything. And that even mm -hmm. questioning that implies that like you disagree with it and then you people run off into really weird yeah, Areas well, I've questioned it. I've made tons of videos on my assault, on my rape. I've been very nuanced about it. But like, again, when I came up, and again, I was in my emotions, so that doesn't count. But maybe when Farah came up, she made some pretty good points. But only Ayla got the gold star from you. And she agreed with you. Ayla and didn't, both of wait, you, you're, you're, you're making assumptions now. Ayla maybe. didn't, Ayla didn't get a gold star for me. Ayla agreed with me. And then I talked to other people that disagreed with me. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's right or wrong. There's a reason why I talked to, I think, three different people and then a bunch of people off stream about it afterwards, too. Because I was just okay. curious about it. But yeah, Ayla happened to agree with me. It doesn't mean she gets a gold star. She could be just as wrong as I am about it. I don't know. Right. Well, I think the issue is that you both have a life in which you feel like you weren't traumatized. But then I don't know if you could know that without examining your whole life and looking at it and saying, what is trauma? What does it look like? Because I know it because I went to a professional and I got diagnosed and we talked through it and they were like, yeah, look at all the ways your life isn't quite where you want it to be, but let's get you there. But with you two, I'm not sure if you're having that other lived experience where you don't get that care and you don't actually examine your life and you don't wonder why. And so you're like, yeah, I'm fine. But again, like maybe we're defining fine wrong and I'm not trying to attack you. And I, I was just like kind of shocked at your ask. The, you asked the question, but I didn't hear a lot of openness or curiosity about the answer. And maybe that's me projecting. But again, I'm open to the idea that people can do all kinds of odd things when it comes to trauma. But trauma is a physiological like change in the brain. It changes. I mean, everything so, is a physio. I don't know what you mean when you say that. Yeah, trauma is a like, physiological change in the brain. Like everything changes our brain, right? Right. But trauma in particular, like when I went and did DBT for my borderline, which I never asked for, but was given as a gift. <laughs> Thank you, universe. I had to go to therapy and re, uh, make my brain rethink the way it processes information. So it's a processing issue. And it was my responsibility 
to do that. And so it meant that everything that I heard, I couldn't assume the worst of. So even when I heard you, I was like, oh, that's kind of like scary. But then I was like, oh, what is he saying? And I'm really trying to figure it out, but I'm not sure you're being as clear as you think you're being, or maybe you're speaking in such a language that I just don't have words for. But again, getting jumped to me and getting in a fight could be the same thing because of the bubble I'm in. So that's my my bubble. So again, that's I, again, why I, I, dis- I don't think there's you. any bubble like that. I don't. I just don't. No, think you that's- can't say that. I'm telling you my lived experience. You're doing it again. I'm telling you, if you asked my brother and he came on stream, he'd be like, "Yeah, bro, it was a fight. What are you talking about? I got jumped by three guys. Didn't see it coming, and they fucked me up. But it's a fight. Like that's what I'm saying. I'm saying for other people, that's not the circumstance. But I don't know if you know that, and you're telling me I don't know that. But bro, you don't know. Well, that. I mean, like getting jumped is a fight, but it's getting jumped. It's very clearly like a different type of thing, right? It's an elevated thing. Right? Like getting ripped is a type yes. of sexual assault, but not all sexual assaults are right. Getting jumped I is a agree. type of fight, but not, yeah, sure. But not all, like, yes. But again, so how you process it, there are people I know in my audience who are like, yeah, I was ripped. it was no big deal. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. They, by definition, were ripped. My brother, by definition, was jumped. Sure. But again, I don't want to compare trauma. All trauma is bad because all trauma is hard. So I don't need to compare it. Getting jumped is bad. Getting ripped is bad. They're both bad. And yeah, then how the individual great, experiences yeah. it. Yeah, okay, so wait, then I'm curious. When you ask, like, is rape just bad because of the way people react? Like, you must not know that. You must know, no, of course not, because it's a it's a change in the brain. You have to rewire your patterns. You have to work Every, on your PTSD. I, I, when you, you say a change it. in the brain, everything changes the brain. That doesn't mean anything. Playing certain types of games, masturbating too much, um, yes. having new routines, everything changes the brain, right? Yes. The question so, is, the, is what causes the change in the brain? That's what I was curious about. Well, it, it's that disconnect between, like, reality expectation and then shocking things happening. Hence PTSD, if it happens. Yeah, but then you, the answer that you just gave there is more extreme than the answer that I gave. I don't realize what, if you, do you understand what you're committing yourself to? When you say it's a difference between expectation and what happens, what if you're expecting to get raped? Does that mean that there's no trauma now because there's no difference between the expectation and what happens? I don't think that's true. Uh, not necessarily, but it could actually allow, like when I went to protests, and I went in ready to like fight cops or die or get hit in the head, I know I would have handled it better than if I was raped at the the event because I wasn't planning to get raped at a protest. I was planning to get violent. You know, not that I ever wanted violence, but I'm just saying I prepared for the violence in case it happened because I've seen people at events get hit with bottles, clubbed over with like, you know what I mean? I've seen people get literally beat, you know, at protests. So of course I went in prepared for that. It would have been traumatizing, but fuck, I would have I would have really went in with a different mindset. Um, but I also would have been traumatized because I still don't know the lived experience until I have it. And then I'm like, oh, look at that. Like, that's pretty scary. Um, with my rape, I didn't. Yeah, of course, I didn't go in to get raped. And I knew all my life I could have gotten raped. I'm a woman, right? I'm a person. All people get raped. All genders get raped. But I, I didn't go in that night really thinking I was going to get raped. I went in that night just like partying, right? Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't disagree with anything so, you're saying. It just it feels like because um, these were these were just like the question I had. But now it feels like you're super reinforcing the point that um that I was asking for before that I'm not even decided on the idea that like, well, if I go into an event expecting something, it's going to dramatically change how I respond to it, which was the kind of the question I was asking that you seem to think that I like was praying for the answer that you're giving now. But well, no. And I'm saying all things are possible with all people. That's my answer. No, 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 my no. That's a, that's a pointless answer. That doesn't mean anything. Well, it does. No, it does because it depends. Are you the category of human that experiences trauma in this way? Or are you the category of human who does in this way? Look, I have immigrant parents from a war torn country. They're having completely different experiences with gunfire and dying and being taken by Saddam soldiers than our military guys are having going in after playing games and sure. Call of Duty all day. I'm just, so everyone's going to have a different experience. Of course. Yeah, I agree. But I'm saying when you say all things are possible with all people, it's not like it's a random distribution of like anything could happen to anybody. Like there's going to be people that have a much higher proclivity towards certain things than other people. So that statement is just kind of like a, like all things are possible with all people. Like if Melina asked me, do you want to go out to eat tonight? And I'm like, well, all things are possible with all people. This, that's not, it doesn't really answer any questions, right? Well, what I mean to say is, if you are, if you experience, everyone's going to have a different reaction to the same experience. Um, and because of well, that. Okay. I disagree, but yeah, no, I, 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 oh. I think we can definitely bucket reactions. So there are a lot of, we have a, we have way more shared reactions than not, right? Everybody, everybody that's gone to school, I think has had like a nightmare of you wake up and you thought that there was like a test tomorrow or that day and you didn't study for it. Or everybody has had like a negative reaction of like almost being in a car accident and then getting really paranoid about like certain things. Like we, we have, there's a lot of shared reactions that we have that are like yes. sexual assault or getting jumped or having your parents scream at you or, you know, whatever, like getting broken up for the first time. Like, yeah, we all have like shared responses that I think 
think are pretty common throughout all of like human history and all of humanity, right? Oh, okay. So yeah, though I agree with the generalizations, yes, I think that I'm more focused on um, being open to like as small of a reaction to as big of a reaction. So obviously with rape victims, there's some pretty common things, aversion to touch, afraid of loud sounds, afraid of the dark, like afraid of like the gender that assaulted them. There's like pretty universal experiences that we have as rape victims. I've gone to a lot of support groups. We've talked about it. We all basically feel similarly, but then there are the nuances, the exceptions, people have different experiences, even within those shared. Yes, I had the same thing. I handled it this way. How did you handle it? So obviously I think I'm more focused focused on the uniqueness of the individual experience, though, of course, taking into consideration, like even statistics, um, like women are more likely to get PTSD, according to the veterans website for .gov. Like apparently women are more likely to get PTSD. And like, that would be interesting to know why that is. Or do women just report PTSD more than men? Or do women get diagnosed with it more than men? I mean, you know what I mean? It's like, those are the questions that I would be interested in, but I don't think we have the answers yet. We just have a general understanding of what we have so far. Sure. But and that's what, what you're asking there. Those are exactly my questions. But yeah. it sounded like okay. on stream, you're like, oh, like my, uh, I think you said my partner, somebody Googled this and the answer's obvious. They're not obvious. Trauma and trauma response are incredibly complicated. It's like the intersection well, of like 20 different things. None of these things are obvious or scientific. I mean, we investigate them, but the whys of like why we develop traumas or, or why some people are more tenacious than others or why some events seem to traumatize everybody. Those are really, really hard to understand things. I mean, I, again, I, I would like both of us. I'm reaching out to some psychologists. I'd love some therapists to come on. I'd love some like professionals who study this for a living to come on because again, I only have my lived experience and my understanding of what I've read, but I'm not, this is not my forte, mm -hmm. right? This is not my um, thing. I think I I just expected, a, I don't know, maybe maybe it was the day I was hearing it. Maybe I, it's how I heard you say it, but I'm not alone, right? Like, I mean, a lot of people very much misunderstood you then. And I would like there to be some sort of like, are we aware that like we're all using language differently? Do you understand how you came off? It's okay if that's not what you meant. Or maybe I just misunderstood it because I'm not in that bubble. But like, this is a real interesting topic. Like, it, I love it. I love the question in general. But I, I got the impression that you, yeah, you just kind of wanted to like shoot the shit more, I guess, which is fine. I mean, I'm just I'm just asking questions around the, the topic. Yeah. I think it's a really hard thing to ask questions around because the ubiquitous support is just supposed to be yes, queen to everybody. And then there's no questions yeah. asked. And then end of discussion. And it feels like asking yeah, any question. Like, I've never even implied that, like, like one of your characterizations, what I said was insane. You said that, like, yeah. Destiny seems to think that a woman that dresses promiscuously likes to get raped. Not even in a billion years. <laughs> Did I say anything even remotely similar to that? What I said was, is somebody that is more open to sex or more promiscuous, and they do that, and I think the examples I gave was they don't mind giving a body count, they're cool with all of that. If that person gets raped, do they have less trauma afterwards because of all of the weird societal stuff that a more conservative person might have around yeah. it doesn't exist with that person? So for instance, if you're a conservative and you think that the body is like the sanctity of Jesus Christ and it's only meant for your husband and you get raped, do you feel like, fuck, like I, my, I'm ruined, I'm less of a woman, I'm disgusting? Like, do you carry a bunch of negative feelings with you that like somebody that is more sexually liberal liberated wouldn't have that's a super fair question and to turn that into the like oh you just think that promiscuous people want to get raped is like the worst engagement with that with that point ever and i don't even think you disagree with me i'm, I'm positive right. you would agree with what i'm saying there they're like a really yes, conservative person yeah there's a lot of sexual shame well, it's probably gonna feel even worse know. getting you, know, you you don't I, no i don't no i don't actually agree with this point because i've like from my understanding of the this the at least what i've read or consumed people feel equally as bad. They have a different relationship with the bad, but the bad is the same. Do you get what I'm saying? The level of bad is the same. It's just for different reasons. I don't agree with that, but maybe I would just have to see it, I guess. I've never seen anything Again, that ever. Again, yeah. like, okay, I really, I have like books I can recommend. I have like channels I can recommend. Like, again, I'll have professionals on, uh -huh. but it's the level of bad is the same, but the why is different. So a conservative woman who's raped might have a different why, and the promiscuous woman might have a different why, or the man might have a different why, but they feel bad. Like, that's what I'm saying. Don't you, why would you disagree with me? Because when you disagree, you're saying that a promiscuous woman wouldn't feel as bad getting, is that what you're saying? Um, I think that they wouldn't, ha yeah, I don't, I don't know if it would be to the same level. So like, for instance, like um, women that grow up in certain conservative households can literally feel like, 
I don't know if they would get trauma responses, but they literally feel disgusting about their own bodies. They can't masturbate. If they get right. wet, they have like horrible feelings about it. And these are completely externally produced feelings, right? Like it's not like a woman naturally hates her vagina or naturally hates getting aroused. But like there are, dude, I've talked to several women growing up who would like sometimes like hump a pillow and then cry after orgasming because mm -hmm. they felt like they're doing yeah, something horrible, sure. right? And and these are people that have trouble like engaging in any sexual contact later on because they feel sh so ashamed about it. Now, would that rise to the level of trauma response? I'm not sure, but that's something that is totally externally driven. Compared to something that's more sexually liberated, they might not have that feeling whatsoever. So I don't know yeah. why I wouldn't extrapolate that experience to almost all forms of interaction, where there are some things that a certain person might go through it and like, ah, eh, that sucked. And another person might go through it and it's like, fuck, I'm actually like less of a human being because of the um, situation I've been raised in to feel that way. Yeah, I think that, again, uh, maybe I'm looking at it like a little differently. So if a, a person grew up in like a rough neighborhood and was fully like expected to get jumped and that was like their normal life, right? Um, but they were always like prepared or, and it still happened and they maybe felt a way about it. Like I always wonder if gang, like gang people experience BTSD or is it just a part of it, mm -hmm. right? But like, again, the level might be different. So maybe you're like jumped by a gang and you're paralyzed now. You would still feel pretty fucking bad, but it would be for a different reason than the guy who's just like innocently walking down the street and gets hit. Then they would feel bad for a different reason, but the pain is there. So like if a promiscuous woman is raped and a conservative woman is raped, the pain is there. It's just for the why is different, but a promiscuous woman who loves sex doesn't want sex ruined. I never, so that's why I yeah, say- Hold on, I, well, I've never even said anything remotely similar to a promiscuous woman wants to get raped. I, can you rephrase I what I mean when I say Sorry. that just so I can understand um, that we have the same thing in our mind? That a, yeah, yeah. that a promiscuous woman would, in, uh, would be impacted differently than a conservative woman when it comes to assault or rape. Yes, okay. Okay. I don't think the differently means better, so I want to make sure you don't mean that either. Uh, okay, do you think that some forms of trauma are worse or are they all the exact same? I don't like to compare trauma because if we did, someone's always going to have it worse. But of course, I, Brittany, could put together a, a maybe. I've tried this a lot with my other friends who have had assault, like who had the worst rape. We've had those conversations. It's really hard to do it. Sure. I, I agree with that, but like... I mean, like, descriptively, like, it must be true that there are some forms of trauma that are worse than other forms of trauma, right? If somebody jumps you and beats you up, that's probably, like, all else equal, not as bad as somebody jumping you and, like, breaking your arm. Or somebody jumping you and, like, breaking your spine, right? Or, like, falling off a horse and, like, breaking well, your neck versus falling yes. off your horse and breaking an arm, right? Some forms are going to be worse than mm -hmm. others, right? But it's subjective all the same, right? That's why you got a Wait. lot of interesting comments yeah. on your Reddit who were like, oh, I'd rather be like tortured for sure yeah. than when, raped. When we say way. subjective, I feel like we use words like subjective to mean random. Subjective is not random, right? Subject, all of our experiences are subjective, but we can still generalize. Like there is gonna be some women out there. Um, I think it's the case that women are more tolerant of pain than men, I think. Um, so it might be the case that like a woman out there can break her arm and a guy can uh, break a finger and the guy actually has a worse response than the woman does because the woman is just more conditioned to like painful things in general. Yeah. That may be the case. But we can still generally say that like all else equal, like the same type of person breaking their arm versus the same type of person breaking their finger, the arm break is probably gonna be worse, right? We can still, we yeah. have, we so ha we, in order for society to work or anything to work, we have to be able to speak on reasonable spectrums, whether we're assigning like pain medication to somebody or whether we're helping somebody deal with the trauma, right? If you've got a really minor trauma, it might be as easy as like, you need a little bit of exposure therapy and you'll be fine. Or it might be like CPTSD where it's like, you have to be in like major fucking rehab or your whole life yeah. is gonna be destroyed. So even in, in like a clinical setting, we have to be able to measure to some extent, like what kind of like, how bad is your trauma? It's not enough to just go, oh, well, it's all subjective and everybody can be anything. We have to, we have to be able to measure it a little bit. Yes, but again, because the individual has a different relationship with that pain or trauma, we all get hurt, we all have pain, but we all feel it differently and have different relationships to it. Your statement insinuates that a promiscuous woman would be more okay with rape than a conservative one. I think all else equal, yes. Because I think, that, we, I think that conservative people, I don't even think you disagree, I think you're just giving me the answer that you feel no. like you're supposed to give. Listen, I think no, that, no, listen to what I'm saying. Okay, yeah. Trauma mm -hmm. is trauma. It's pain. not though. What do you mean pain. trauma is trauma? No, that's not even true. Pain is pain. That's not even true. Do you think that like, oh, oh, like there are lots of women that don't necessarily report that much pain when giving birth because of the euphoria of like having a child and everything. Yes, because or they have a different experience with it. So you can't say giving birth is always painful. It's like, well, for some people it's more painful than for others. Sure, exactly. but the thing that happens to the Obama, or I'm saying Obama, the thing that happens to the body in birth 
that's a traumatic event. That's some crazy shit that's happening compared to most things. But so right. I think you, you can't just say like trauma is trauma because it's not. I, I think that there's a lot of stuff that factors into whether or not we will experience trauma with a particular thing or how severe that response will be. Right. But I'm making the argument, and maybe you're not hearing me, is that the pain occurs at the same level for different reasons or for the same promiscuous women and men have reported that they feel just as out of control and away from their bodies as people who are like in other bubbles from my understanding everyone is experiencing a similar pain trauma with rape regardless of their backgrounds but it's still happening now for the people that it's happening to some people won't have this experience but the promiscuity cannot you're making the point that it could impact it and i just don't think it does based off of like the things i've read about trauma that is one of the most like that's what a, a very consistent talking point from the right that's why i like no, i said okay, that hold on, i gotta wait 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 please oh, please God. i didn't mean to say i didn't want to straw man you or something I'm saying I'm letting you know that that is a misconception. Like if you wear slutty clothes, you're more likely to get raped. No, That's it's not, not it's true. Not, it, has, it has nothing to do with that. Let's. How about instead of saying more okay with getting raped, let's say less traumatized. That's what I mean. Less That's traumatized. What I'm there's nothing to. Pro That's there's nothing I've read. No psychologist I've listened to, no book I've read of the thousands I've read where that seems to be consistent. And again, I'm not the professional, so I'll bring one on. But like, that's not what I'm hearing. Where are you getting that from? Why do you even have that thought? Um, from what I've read, there are a lot of things that mediate the type of trauma response we have to things. One of those things can be whether or not you're religious. Somebody with a high level of faith that has a healthy engagement with the religion, for instance, tend to have less trauma responses in their life because of a coping mechanism. Um, things like ACEs, adverse child um, encounters, I think. Um, uh, that will mediate health outcomes and your likelihood of being traumatized in the future. Things like certain genes being turned on or off will mediate trauma response in the future. There's a ton of things that psychologists have I can shoot you an article yes. on if you want. I, no, no, just, sure. wait, Stephen, I agree. What does that have to do with promiscuous women then? Why did you make that assumption about Because that? Because if it happens in every single other area of life, why would this one area be special? And this is actually- What do you mean? What happens? You're Sex making, happens no, or no, rape happens? No, no, what happens is different people based on their background and lived experience and everything else respond differently to traumatic events. But you're saying, whoa, no, 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 no. For rape, it's actually the singular, actually it's the exact same thing for everybody. That's a ridiculous statement. No, I'm not statement, saying that. You're, you're saying that regardless that. of your background, rape is always gonna have the same level of bad no, response to a woman? I did not oh, say that. Okay, you literally said that. I literally, no, I literally just said some people get raped and it doesn't traumatize them. Okay, earlier what you said verbatim was that there might be different reasons why people feel a level of bad, but the level of bad will be the same. If you're changing no. that, that's fine. Okay, you said that verbatim. No, I okay. am saying, no, I am saying that your argument was that if a conservative woman or a promiscuous woman gets raped, the promiscuous woman would have a better time of it. And I said, no, I feel like if she's traumatized, she's traumatized. Being promiscuous doesn't now allow me to have less trauma with my sex or my rape. You are the one saying that. I'm saying, no, it depends on the person. Some promiscuous women might have a harder time and some conservative women might have an easier time. And I'm saying it's nuanced. You are the one saying all promiscuous women X. I, okay, here's a general Unless question. Saying, yeah. Let's say that, <clears throat> Let's say that two people find themselves turned on in public because they see something that's very sexually arousing. If it's one is a conservative woman and one is a promiscuous woman, who's more likely to have a, like a better response to that getting turned on? Also, let's not use promiscuous, let's use sexually liberated. Because I'm not just saying like, oh, a slut. Like somebody that has like a better engagement, a healthy engagement with sexuality. Who's more likely to have a healthier response to like getting turned on in public? And who's more likely to have like feelings of shame? I want to say that it depends on the conservative bubble, but generally speaking, I would say the conservative bubble will probably experience more shame for sure. Okay, let's say that two people are engaged in a sexual act, okay? Let's say that for the first time, both people squirt, okay? Who's more likely to feel like intense shame relating to that? Like the conservative person or the sexually liberated person? Uh, wait, I'm so, can you repeat the question? Let's say that a woman is engaged in a sexual activity, and let's say for the first time ever she squirts. Who's more likely to feel like feelings of intense shame around that? The sexually liberated person or the conservative person? Um, I don't know, because most conservatives I know who are married don't care what happens in the bedroom. So why would squirting be shameful to a conservative? I can see why it could be. Because it's kind of like awkward, but most of the conservatives I know who are married, everything goes in the bedroom because they're married under the sanctity of marriage. 
Except anal. <laughs> so anal's not allowed. But squirting is normal. It's like orgasming. So why would they be ashamed I, of an squ- orgasm? I, I, fuck. It might be the bubbles, but I think that squirting is less common than anal. I think squirting is relatively rare. If we're talking a full-on fucking... Not really? like Not like I got really wet, but like I'm like, we need towels. Oh, yeah. I... I don't know. I'm okay. So again, I don't know this, but like from my experience with conservative bubbles, yeah, everything but anal goes in the bedroom. Squirting is a good sign because that means your man loves you. But I don't know. Like I, I don't know. That could be just my sheltered exam experience. Okay. Um. I, my, I guess without doing a million examples, my feeling is going to be that the sexually liberated person is probably going to be able to deal with um, strange Rape better. I didn't say that. I said strange <laughs> sexual events um, better than the conservative person because the conservative person is going to have like more hangups, more shame, more externally reinforced expectations about their sexuality that's going to make it harder for them to deal with those events. Whereas the sexual liberated person will have an easier time navigating them. If that okay. is true, which I'm mm-hmm. not, not any reasonable person would say that's obviously true. If that is true, I don't know why that wouldn't also extend into realms relating to like sexual assault or rape. That like, let's say somebody gets sexually assaulted or raped, that like, I feel like for a conservative minded person, I feel like there are a lot of questions of like, am I worth anything now in the future? Has my body been degraded? Is a husband gonna love or respect me? Like they're gonna have thoughts or questions in their head that a promiscuous person is, or a sexually liberated person is not never gonna have, but is less likely to have. That'd be my guess if, they're, if they have a good engagement with sex. Not that it would okay. be great, not that they love to get raped, not that the rape is so much better, but just that they would likely have tools to deal with it in a better way, which would hopefully mediate a traumatic response. Yes. So from everything I've seen, that doesn't seem to be the case because PTSD and trauma to the body and brain seem to impact everyone, irregardless of how comfortable they are with their bodies. I, I would love to see like a thing on that. Or you can send me like a... I will absolutely, the moment any okay. of these people get back to me, the moment I have everything put together, I will 100% send it to you. Gotcha. But this is very important to me because I have like spent a lot of time trying to recover from my PTSD. And from my understanding of how the body works, the body really does hold the trauma and it doesn't matter that I'm liberated. It didn't matter that I had, you know, I was a secularist when I got raped. It didn't matter, didn't matter, didn't matter. Like being promiscuous is the assumed, um, uh, yeah, you'll deal with it better. But I, I, I think that's the bad assumption because it doesn't seem to correlate with the data, but I could see why the assumption is made. I, yeah, I, don't, I, I, don't, I, I, I think it does correlate with the data. I don't think there's any yeah. data that contradicts me. I've I never seen anything the data. Yeah, okay. I will get a professional on. Maybe uh-huh. you have more clout than me. Maybe you can get them to talk to you faster. But I will reach out to some of the psychologists I know who deal with trauma on YouTube, and I will see if they want to talk to me. Because, yeah, I just feel like I'm not the person to say this, but from what I've read, mm-hmm. that's that's not the case. Okay. So I, I do appreciate you talking to me. See how we see we fixed it. We're good. Did we, though? Right? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. Did we? <laughs> We're good. I didn't mean to misunderstand you, but I, I don't know if, like, I, I, I'm just trying to, as your, like, hopefully friend, also just let you know, like, hey, I think I might be hearing you wrong, or I think I'm hearing something. But to be clear, you do you do have that stance that you feel like a, a sexually liberated person would have a better way I don't want to say a better time. Let's say less okay. trauma, because that the less intuition pump time. is so insane there. Yeah. Just okay. like how, like, 200 years ago, I think that a child dying probably wasn't as traumatic as, like, a child dying today. If you go back to where, like, people have 12 kids and six of them die, I don't know if that if that parent is experiencing the same trauma as, like, today if a kid dies, where it's, like, a really, really, really big deal. That would just be my guess, yeah. because the cultural expectations and the social norms are going to heavily influence how you expect an event to happen and the response to said event. Okay, then I will 100, I just wanted to make sure, because that was what I heard, and that's where we heavily disagree, but that is, I just don't want to take you out of context anymore. So we've all heard it from Steven's mouth. Okay. <laughs> okay, perfect. I will reach out to you when I have more information. All right, be careful, buddy. Okay, thanks. Have a good day. Bye. Destiny's point is so easy to understand. The problem is that, especially if a victim or other people that feel strongly about this hear my point, what all they're hearing me say is, if you get raped and you're traumatized, it's your fault. That's what I think that's what they hear on like repeat from what I'm saying over and over again. Oh, you're traumatized from a rape? Sounds like you should just not be traumatized from a rape. I think that's what they just hear on repeat over and over and over again. That's probably the issue, I think. <clears throat> if I wanted to like, well, yeah, no, okay. Let's say you got robbed and you got robbed again. Destiny is saying the second time can't be as traumatic. I'm not saying it can't be. What I'm saying is it probably wouldn't be. If I had to guess, if I was in Ukraine and a missile hit a building, I would probably lose my shit for like an hour. (laughs) 
I would probably be shaking. I'd probably be wondering if I'm about to instantaneously die. And my guess is other people like um, Anna from Ukraine, she would probably go back to sleep and not even think about it. That would be my guess. I'm sure some people are traumatized, but like like some people, like the conditions around you could be really normalized or really fucked, but like people adapt. Like acclimation is one of the things that we do the best as humans. Um, that's why people with horrible disabilities even report decently high standards of living and happiness, self-reported happiness or whatever, because you get used to it. Believe it or not, you get used to being in a wheelchair. You get used to being blind or deaf. Like these are things that you adjust to. You're not miserable every single day about it, generally, unless there's other things going on. But humans act, or when you get new things, you adapt really quickly, right? You get a new iPhone, you get a new car, you get a new raise or whatever, and you think, God, this is the best day of my life. This is so awesome. And then after like a week, you're like, oh fuck, it just feels normal again. You don't feel amazing every single time you look at your phone, you feel cool for like three days and then you're over it, right? Humans adapt to things. We acclimate very, very, very quickly to almost everything. It's just like human nature. Like, I think we've watched videos of like people outside drinking coffee in Israel uh, when like the Iron Dome is like intercepting rockets and shit and people are just like out there like chilling. And I'm like, what the f I think that some people are very resistant to the idea that trauma is a social component. It could be partially post hoc inflicted. Yeah, maybe. And she keeps bringing up. Uh oh. Every time. Oh, what do you want? Are you about to trigger the f me? No, actually, I think I understood what you were saying, but I think that um, I understand why <laughs> it wasn't received very well. But I think if you were framing it as why are some people more resilient than others? I don't, I think that framing is even worse because then it makes people feel like losers. Like, why aren't you resilient enough? Why is this person so much more resilient than you? I feel like people get really bad feelings about that word. So I try not to use really? that as much. Yes. I said there's tenacious like instead, but. There's a lot of valid reasons why someone wouldn't be resilient and it wouldn't be in their fault. Like, but it sounds like, it, it sounds like victim blaming, right? Maybe people say like, what I said sound like victim blaming. I I, I feel like that. Maybe not. Maybe other people wouldn't. But I feel like if I said, oh, like, why weren't you more resilient when you got raped? Like, why didn't you have higher resiliency? Why are some people, like, so negatively affected by it? Like, it feels like victim blaming, I guess. Oh, well, I mean, someone shouldn't have to necessarily justify their lack of resilience. Although, if they were open to talking about it, I suppose they could. Because, I mean, it, it could just be things like how or where you were brought up. If you have like a good support network, you have good friends, you're connected with your family. History of mental illness will increase your likelihood of PTSD. Just being a woman and the experiences that you go through increases your chance of PTSD and things like this. But it doesn't mean that, I mean, I if, if I see someone who's very adaptable and resilient, I just think they're fucking lucky because they probably had a really good life to give them that the position where they're at. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that someone that's not as resilient sucks. I don't think so. I mean, I agree with you, but I think that's what people feel like people are saying. Huh. Well, that like, oh, you're not resilient enough, so like... Yeah, I mean, I've been through trauma, um, and etc. And I wouldn't say that if someone said I was less resilient, they would be wrong. I think they would have been right. I think I'm definitely in a better position now. And I don't think that if someone said that to me, they would be victim blaming. I think that's pretty much my, what my psychiatrist came out with anyway. It's like, you need to work on this and this and this. You're not as resilient because of this, this and this. So, you know. Okay. I don't know. But I guess, yeah, maybe people are just really extra sensitive about it. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that also sounds kind of mean to say, but <laughs> okay. No, no, it's not. Like, the people have things they're sensitive about, and that's completely It must be nice fine. being a woman when you just say shit like this and not have to worry about how people perceive it, you know? I like that for you. Uh, well, uh, but didn't Brittany say that she was sensitive about it, I think, didn't she? Yeah, but Brittany's pretty honest about her feelings and stuff. I, like, I think she's a little bit more capable than most of, like, having a mature conversation. I think most people, if you call them, like, you're being kind of sensitive about this, would get very upset. Oh, well, I think it's a, yeah, I mean, if you're saying it to somebody, I guess that can be rude. But if you have self-awareness and you can acknowledge it, I think it's better for conducive conversation in this part. But yeah, I see what you mean. But I don't think you were asking a bad question. I think it's very, it, there is a lot of nuance in it. It's going to be a variety of reasons why some people can bounce back and others really struggle. And it can be a bit random in some situations. Yeah. Wow, okay. But I mean, there's a lot of studies that suggest that emotional pain can be... Um, as bad, if not worse, than physical pain. So if you have something that's physical pain and an emotional pain on top, you can imagine why it might end up being a bit worse. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, anyway, just, I don't think you were saying anything that bad, so. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I just came in for a tiny bit of support there. All right, I'm okay. gonna head off. Bye. Be careful, bud. Oh.
to some extent, I would expect that, like, I don't know if sexual, so I think he might be missing the mark here. I don't know, and I, again, I haven't seen the data. I haven't seen any good data specifically on sexual liberation and whatnot. I see mostly self-reports on it, mm. which I'm like, I don't know how much I care about somebody saying that, because how, you and I both know there's a lot of people who feel sexually liberated who are right. mostly, like, still dealing with their sexual shame. They're just, yes. like, dealing with it by trying to, like, put on the facade of being opposite, right? 100. So it, even the studies I've seen, I don't know how much I care. But when I think about it, I don't know if sexual liberation specifically is a protective factor as much as sexual repression and shame is a risk factor. I agree with that. Okay. That's, That's how what I, I would agree with. It. That's what I agree with. I don't think, because what it does in the mind of the listener, and I'm just trying to be like careful with language here, is that it gives less sympathy and empathy to the to the sexually liberated person as if it's not this is okay so this is exactly what i think i said was happening what i thought is that she feels like i'm just like victim blaming it was that she kept phrasing it was like oh so you think that like sexually uh promiscuous people love getting raped or whatever it's like the yeah not as bad <clears throat> and i think that's super dangerous because not all sexually liberated people have resources or they also like maybe they're like me where they they suffer from toxic masculinity and they suffer from like um, I never need help. I'm fine. Everything's fine. But obviously, like, I still deal with it to this day. And so it is one of those things where I just want there to be a clarification because the worry is that, again, everyone's different and I want to accept everyone from where they come from. But this is the reason why I think I don't want to give, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt of being a good person, which I don't have to do. I know he's a good person. Right. But good people don't always protect the people in their lives the way they could. Right, and so, like I said, such Girl, did you walk all the way to Antarctica? Oh, fuck. You're so far away. You are literally on the other side of the universe. Oh, but I keep forgetting <laughs> which mic. I, usually when I have my camera on, it reminds me to stay by this mic, but oh. I usually use my headset mic and I'm walking around thinking I have it. I did <laughs> come back from Antarctica. I can report the penguins are happy still. Yeah, I'm so glad. So yeah, of course, Steven's a good person. I just right. like, again, a lot of people were confused by his statements because it sounded again. So, okay, that's what I always say, like the why and how we come from an angle matters. So I always want to come from everyone suffers, suffering is valid, but let's talk mm -hmm. about in your personal life, how to be grateful for certain things. Like maybe a sexually liberated person can be grateful for like access to support groups. Right. And then that's, that's gratefulness and humility and that's beautiful. But none of that negates the pain and trauma that people endure. Right. And I, I genuinely, when listening to Stephen, I don't think he was trying to say that they're not getting traumatized at all. I could be wrong. I don't want to put words in his mouth. But when I was listening to it, I was listening to somebody who's like probably He's, not I, super trauma informed on language specifically, yeah. trying to describe risk factors and protective factors. Do you think they're less traumatized? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, now I want to scream at erudite. I just want to scream at erudite. It's really hard to quantify like less and more traumatized because as you kind of said, two people with very like, have you heard of the, if, oh man, I'm going to use, have you ever heard of like uh, the uh, diathesis stress model of uh, like mental health? No. Okay. Big word. Doesn't really matter. It's basically like, imagine a person is like a beaker and you have this genetic point of a line along the beaker where if you have enough events and it gets you past that line, you're now at risk for like mental health issues, right? And everyone's kind of set point is different. Some people have personality differences, right? Some people are very, like some babies, you can test like stimuli reactions. Some babies, when you show like novel stimuli to, they get really excited mm -hmm. and they want to touch it. Other babies just scream, they hate it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'd, be, I'd be interested to know like how much is that proclivity a protective factor or risk factor for how you handle distressing events at large. But the issue when we're talking about like trauma itself as an individual, we're always having to navigate like individual experiences where an event that traumatizes Cindy, if it had identically happened to Anne, Anne might be like, yeah, it wasn't a big deal. Where exactly. Cindy might be like, that shattered my world. Because in exactly. a lot of, because this is the, this is kind of like the, the element of trauma that's, as you said, like subjective. It's Brittany's saying arbitrary, exactly, but she's technically disagreeing that. with what she said before. What seems to traumatize people specifically is when they feel helpless and it shatters their expectations of the world, right? Yeah. And I think a lot of times in the cases we have, especially penetrative I'm going full pro after this. I'm ready. I'm, re I'm waiting for Aerodite to a come in. A lot of guys that I talk to, they're like, yeah, like if I got 
Ugh, I'm ready. I don't care. Now I'm done. Now I'm done with this. I'm done now. God, that's awful, right? There seems to be something. Literally, that was all of Destiny's Reddit. They're like, yeah, if I was raped by a woman, no big deal. But wait, a man? Nah, I'll take the jumped. I'll get jumped instead. And that's the point. The point is, is that we're all having different conversations. Yes. Because when I say don't mean stealthing, even though it's sexual assault, right? So. Right. There's like a conversation or some people consider their molestations rapes and I don't. So like we're having different conversations, but ultimately I just, everyone experiences it differently. And it's, I don't want to play that game because again, someone is always going to suffer more than you. But of course, like, I don't know. Like I, I just don't, I, how do you explain to somebody, like, do you relate to that idea of um, like genuinely, if somebody's like, would you like to be raped again? Or would you like to lose your pinky finger? What do I need a pinky finger for? I, I'm not sure how much I, re- I, I don't know. I don't know what I think about that. Do you know what I'm um, saying? Like that was the conversation we ended up all having though. And that's the right. problem is of course it's going to be different based off the people. There's not a wrong or right answer. You can't say like, Brittany's crazy for not wanting to get. Why do you, have you had it? It's awful. Like for me, something I've never had before would be less traumatizing than something I know is traumatizing. Right. And see how I'm choosing my consent is being considered so I can choose violence over. So I don't right. know if people are understanding when we're having these conversations, of course it's gonna be subjective. If if people wanna get versus beat up, great. But that doesn't mean that one person is bad or good. It's just like, there was a lot of, um, that's insane, that's crazy, this is damaged people. But the thing is, is like, if you've never been raped, of course it doesn't sound that bad if you think it's just like some hot woman is gonna take advantage of you in a locker room. Right, and I guess, I think one thing that is, important in this conversation which is like how does our society treat each of these events right like in the Mm. case of a physical assault i don't think anyone would really question you on it because it's like i could get gofundme girl i could raise a gofundme and people would give me money if i tried to raise gofundme for my uh very specific groups would only fund me right and so then it's like okay like i think one part that's interesting in this is like if why are we picking one over the other and i think like something that's probably missing in this conversation is like because like being socially rejected and experiencing like that level of like psychological mind afterwards mm. is really 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 distressing um like a lot and this is why a lot of people who have been who have experienced both like when you talk to people who experience physical and sexual abuse a lot of them are like i would take being physically abused every single time um but yeah i, I, I don't know mm. it's such a sophisticated topic to talk yeah. about and i think that we really don't have the language or understanding to do it well even when i like listen to like sometimes like trauma specialists like it feels like all we want to do is be, like yes queen yes girl and it's like the benefit like when i first realized that i had had like a sexual assault history mm. i am so glad that my friends didn't respond to me like yeah 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 you're traumatized you're a victim it's like i don't know what that fact that would have had on me but i don't think it would have been good for me instead my friend just like heard me out and allowed me to label the event yes. she's like how do you feel about it what was yes. that experience like for you at no point did she offer me a label and i think in a large part like when i think about like because i was like 21 when this happened and uh, it was like in a pretty distressing event and i went to kind of college and there was like some scarring like severe severe vaginismus and i'm like oh, okay like all the pieces kind of came together slowly i'm so glad that i had a friend that was willing to just give me the space to experience the event in the way that I was ready to. Yeah. Whereas I think a lot of time when people talk about like certain traumas, we just kind of want to like yes queen them. And like, I'm mm. concerned that like we, we yes queen people into like worse states essentially. Like that would be like yeah, one for sure. That That's my whole point. Oh! Okay, can I say yeah. something though? From my experience, oh! I get it equally. So the conservatives oh! don't believe it happens and the progressives think you have to be traumatized. Right. And I'm like, I might have said that verbatim. I, I think I actually it. said that verbatim. I think I used a phrase, yes, queen, and everything. I can just actually be honest about how I felt about it. Right. Yeah. But that's the problem is like, when you are, it doesn't matter. Even Steven's audience were ranking my rape in right. comments. So it doesn't matter who you talk to. Everyone's going to have a preference and a bias to move you in a direction of answer about what is more, what is better and how you should handle it and what should count as rape and all these things, which is why I think it's only a matter to the individual and the medical professionals they're working with. I honestly worked on my rape alone, basically. I went to some survival groups and they helped, but eventually I had to stop going to them because they were so wonderfully inclusive, male appearing people showed up and it would trigger my PTSD. Mm -hmm. So I didn't even find a safe space in most rape um, places because they were too busy fighting over whether or not it should be gender inclusive. And it was so frustrating. I was like, okay, I just need to talk to my medical professionals at this point. So that's what I did. I relied not on the bubbles, not the support of my family or friends. I mean, yes, I had them, but I didn't really 
need them to help me with the bulk of my trauma. I needed a professional who explained to me how my brain works and why my body is feeling this way so I could deal with it. Because honestly, who deals with our, our PTSD on a daily basis except for us? So I have to deal with it. It's my responsibility. Again, just like my borderline that I didn't ask for. So I understand this. I just feel like sometimes we have an expectation of society without realizing we are a part of the problem. Destiny's yes. words would trigger me, right? right? If I date, if I was with Destiny, that would be very unnerving for me to hear from a sexual partner because right. he's not putting an onus. He's not putting enough emphasis on protecting both people. He's more sympathetic to one than the other. And that's what it appears as. I'm not saying that's what it is factually. I'm saying I would need somebody who is more, even friends. I've had friends who literally have been like, well, didn't you say your was kind of your choice? And I'm like, okay, wow. When I told you that story, you heard the complete wrong message. Right. So I think you have to have the right people to actually humanize you, hold you accountable, because a lot of our rapes, especially at parties, could be avoided by not going to certain parties. And at the same time, I, I don't know that, right? Because all of the, the, a lot of the time we know the people who rape us. Right. So it's a lot, of, there's a lot here. I'm just saying, I'm open to any possibility being true, but I don't like the generalizations because people get lost in the weeds that way. Yes. I would have gotten lost in the weeds that way. If I got yes girl or rejected, I this had to army tell army. both of those bubbles to shut the f up and let me work with a singular other person. Yeah, so then I guess my question would be, is how do we as a society, because as a society, we don't really have the capacity for this high resolution. Like, um, nuance, right? Like I would say, we don't take normative claims about like protective and risk factors and apply them to an individual, right? We talk to the individual and let them ex explore it themselves, right? Mm -hmm. But when we're talking as a society about this, um, right, I, I wonder I for- see it, but the route is long and full of dangers. In mid 2008, the the I don't know how you feel world. about this, but there's often... No! I missed the throw! ...stuff that right. feel... Was, uh, like, I, I feel I strange that. about them, where I'm like, obviously, if you were well, this distressed, here. that matters to me. Um, but the, the like, event here. that you're describing, there, like, it, it, it is absolutely, like, no a sexually, blocks. like, like over not here. good event. But yeah. it's really hard for me to apply the same language versus somebody who's like fortress, waking exactly. up with options. a fifth inside them or is like too drunk to consent or like, like yeah, more for sure. like clear options. cut situations. And so I'm empathetic is to this both. Is this the throw that I missed? A lot of times our society kind of tries to like low resolution treat them all the same. Yes. Um, which I see it. I know for me, <laughs> but the I sometimes find frustrating. And that's where I think like the of ranking dangerous. of trauma specifically comes up because it's like, pinned down, right? A violent, aggravated yeah. assault yeah. versus somebody where they were drunk and woke up versus somebody who was stealth versus somebody like, and they're all bad. Like nobody mm. should be saying that they're good. But how do we as a society talk about these things? Because it mm. like, especially criminologically, they necessarily have to get treated differently, right? Like they're mm. gonna result in different charges, different views yeah. admitted to them. Okay, so just for the record, my work doesn't care about society. Right. Because I can't, I literally, I've, society has never helped me. Society has never embraced me. Society has never been the reason I've been successful. Mm -hmm. It has always been individual bubbles, small groups, individuals, myself. So my work is predicated on not relying on society. Right. Because society takes too long to problem solve, but I appreciate its efforts. So I read a book about a feminist once. Oh, I can't remember her name. She's an English. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I watched an interview of her. She's an English feminist. She was brutally raped at a party. And she was like, oh, you know, what are you going to do? And I was like, damn. Like the way she reacted to it is kind of the point is that I want to have her be valid and me be valid. I want the person who was molested at a store just by someone touching their boob. If they felt they were horrified by that. I want that to be as valid as anything else in their own personal experience. And then when the law comes in and all that stuff, sure, there can be a hierarchy. I'm all about tier systems. Let's go. But again, when we're just talking about individual experiences, it's <clears throat> it's hard to even um, account for society because like we're all born in different religious bubbles and cities inside cities inside cities. So I, I don't have those solutions if I'm being honest, but I want to validate everyone's possible experience because the moment we make it hierarchical, we like lose our empathy and sympathy for people's like lived experience. Now, are we obligated as individuals or societies to feel sad for everyone? No, right? Because there are some people I know who I don't even know if I believe their stories. Yes. But 
that's okay. the thing. I'm not obligated to believe their stories, but I'm also not a person who would go and say, like, I'm very cautious about how I, yes. you know what I'm saying? Okay. I think I figured out where you <clears throat> and Destiny's conversation broke down then. Destiny is talking only about society. Oh, well, yeah, I don't fucking know. How, I don't know. Right. And talk. the personal experiences can't be validated equally on a societal level because we live in a society with like uh, institutions and systems that respond to these things at a societal level. But I think that's a large portion of where yeah, probably could be wrong. But yeah. Yeah. Because obviously, like, if I care about, like, I can't, I've tried to work with society. It just, I don't make any leeway. I help a lot more people if I work individually. Mm -hmm. So obviously, yes, I, I, my work is predicated on the individual. How does the individual, like, regardless of how society treats you, how do you get through this trauma? Mm -hmm. Because society will probably, yes, man, you into more trauma or no man you into more trauma. Mm -hmm. And so you have to find a way through yourself. And so I'm very in the survival, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, but not the conservative way, the progressive yeah. way, which yeah. means like fight the fucking system and fuck the system. But the system, yeah, I, I, that's why I, I'm so excited to get like a professional here who like deals with trauma victims directly. That's why I loved my therapist, Kyla, because mm. she legit was like, yeah, of course you want to kill yourself. Life sucks. I was like, thank you. She goes, your life is really hard. I was like, yeah, it's pretty hard, but you know, it's okay. Like, it's fine. I have all these things. She goes, stop. Stop saying it's fine when you're allowed to say it sucks, but you're still managing because you're like, you're a badass. Yes, but it still sucks. And you still have to hold yourself accountable. Like she did everything. She cheered me on. She held me accountable and she made me go apologize to people I hurt. Right. Yes. Like she did all of it. It was perfect. But yes. society to ask that from society, girl. Right. And so then the question is that I think probably Stephen has is as a society, can we have a low resolution zeitgeist that's a little bit better than it is now? Um, and I would like to believe that we can. I don't know yeah. what it specifically would be because I think like the idea of like all traumas are equal and you just like treat them all the same is like, right. the cons I think part of why like we'll get the pushback on the opposite side is because it's like, that's such a like ineffective and untrue statement, right? Whereas instead like uh, trust but verify uh, is like a little bit of a better statement versus like believe all women is probably like yes. not the best kind right, of no. place, especially because it's very exclusive because as, right. as if people exactly, don't lie as if people don't lie like so exactly. stupid no i absolutely obviously i think that's all bullshit like but i don't like that steven was like britney's too close to this subject i was like bro we're having two different conversations i feel like we are and they're like no and i'm like okay and then now i'm realizing like okay if we're talking about society versus the individual then i literally society i don't believe it fixes itself i believe bubbles contribute to the larger bubble but i think all the bubbles want different things it will never happen mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but sure low low resolution or whatever sure go for it have fun but yeah i just i'm focused on how we treat people individually in our own lives and how our trauma manifests and then how a lot of us call it a cope or i don't have any trauma and it's like okay like i don't know what that means you know what i mean because as a society our trauma is obviously clear right yeah. So maybe it starts with the individual a little bit, but maybe that's too conservative of a talking point, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, okay, uh, this was super okay. helpful. Do you have any other thoughts though? I'm not pushing you off, but. No, no, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, I just okay. like, when I was listening to you guys, I was like, oh, we're talking past each other. Like, Yeah, oh, no. yeah, and I don't want to do that either. But yeah, so yeah. okay, when I talk to Steven, I should ask him if we're talking about society or individuals. Yeah, I think that would probably be helpful. Although Steven now says that he wants me to come on and fight him, so I guess. I guess stay tuned to find out if I misquoted him. So oh, if I was wrong, to, are you going to go on a show? To... Cause we'll listen in. We'll watch. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm going to go chat. To him oh now. girl. We'll see you in a, hello. You ready to die? Yeah, I'm okay. ready to die. Okay. I'm I, now. Did I put words in your mouth? I feel like. No, I, it's okay. I, I just decided yet. to embrace it. I'm pro. Okay. So let's get that out of the way initially. Okay. okay Understand? Shut up. Okay. No, you're not. Shut now that we've up. got that out of the way. Okay. I'm going to have a <laughs> more frank conversation about this. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. okay. Yeah. Society has been poisoned with the inability to ever understand at scale a negative event that somebody goes through okay it might be uh, a child hearing something in a classroom and having a emotional breakdown and then running to twitter about it or it might be somebody inappropriately touching you and then having the same response apparently as you would to like a full-on horrible gang sexual assault okay this is not good for a variety of reasons okay so here's one thing okay that i want to push you on that i know that you are correct okay we have to be able to rank trauma. You understand that, right? As a diagnostician, maybe not professionally, but like you have to be able to get an assessment of where somebody's at with a traumatic response. Nobody would come in and go like, hey, I think my trauma is destroying my life. Like I might need help with this. And you would go, well, actually all of it is subjective and anybody could respond in anything to any way. And I don't want to rank your trauma. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? Okay, I'm gonna back this up like two steps. Go. 
A major reason you and Brittany were misunderstanding is because she's never talking about society. She's always talking about how she as an individual interacts with specific That's not true. She concepts. was talking about society because she was talking about conservative women and promiscuous women and everything. She was talking about society. But ignore that. I don't care about that. I'm asking you not now. Not in the way you are because you're she, talking about no, system. She was. To get t so I want you to answer my question, okay? Okay. So the question Being is... Being able to rank and understand the badness of somebody's trauma is pretty important from a yes correct and she yes she okay. agreed with me by the end uh, yeah it's she agreed like, with you i know and you said every single thing i said i don't care about that now okay now i'm just okay. fighting you okay I'm just what do you sure. think was the difference what do you think was the difference <clears throat> the difference is that i'm a man and in her mind all i'm saying over and over again is you deserve to be raped and your response is your fault and you should have done something better about it because having these kinds of conversations are impossible the only thing people want to hear is your experience was the worst thing that could ever happen in the world and all experiences like this are the worst thing that could ever happen in the world and any other type of experience we can't even think of saying that one was better or worse than the other. i can't even rank them it's blah 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 a bunch of silliness but i understand it but it's like a personal engagement with it where it's like this really bothers me and it sounds like you're just like blaming me on everything that's what that's what the conversations are if it's anything besides relentless affirmation that's what it feels like and i heard her say things in that like i want these two different types of traumas to be valid of course every type of trauma can be valid i've never said anything otherwise but when i hear statements like that what i'm hearing is somebody just looking for like affirmation and the thing that especially bothers me about this is if i was having a personal conversation with somebody and they felt like i wasn't hearing or seeing them that is totally fine if they feel like i'm being insensitive but people are jumping into this conversation that i'm already having on stream i'm already having a conversation about like is it hierarchical what's causing people to have traumatic responses and she was one of the people that jumped in and wanted to talk about it to jump in and say well i feel like it wasn't being insensitive to me it's like you entered this conversation that i was having i'm not here to cater to your personal things about it you wanted to be a part of the conversation that i was already having if you wanted to dictate or change the terms of that conversation or say hey i've got a personal experience with this could you like be a little bit sensitive something that's totally fine i can understand that but you can't jump into my conversation and then start demanding that i make a whole bunch of like i need to cater to you and this and this and this and this otherwise i'm being like an insensitive or hateful person i don't think that's fair i think that's i think that's wrong sure and i i, I suspect like a large i suspect that britney jumped in thinking that she was good to have the conversation at an ideological level specifically mm -hmm. and the problem is that like she even when she's talking about like groups like bubbles she's not talking about society in the way you are because like when i'm thinking about ranking trauma i'm thinking about diagno diagnostics i'm talking about federal crimes i'm talking about like legislature policy making and like institutional ranking of traumas that is necessary for like we need to figure out whether aggravated rape is worse than like molestation like touching somebody's breast because obviously they need to have like different charges that are applied to them mm -hmm. right the issue is that when she's talking about like conservative women, even when it's like broadband and generalized like that, she's still talking about like the individual person. Um, yeah, but I, at some point, when you're making statements like, and she literally says in the conversation, when you're making statements like anybody can experience anything in any way, it's like, what are we talking about right now? Like, <laughs> do like, you think that a like a therapist or somebody like who is responding to another individual on like an individual level who is a rape victim? That you would that they would talk to Brittany in the way that you were talking about rape. No, of course not. Okay, Brittany thinks the most important thing is connecting with the individual. But you okay, want that's to fine. Society. But I, I agree with that. I think in connecting the individual is important. But I'm not having a one-on-one -on -one therapy session. I'm, I'm having a broader conversation about like like what what are protective factors for people in in, in coming out of like adverse sexual scenarios or rapes without being as like negatively impacted like are there protective factors are there risk factors that's an interesting question to me and i don't think we it's very 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 hard to explore it and it's very hard to know what the answer is but it's but, but that type of question is very interesting to me and it was relevant to another video i think they were watching whatever so that's what the conversation was it wasn't like mm -hmm. what is the most sensitive way that i can approach your particular assault and have that conversation with you that's like a it's a totally separate almost unrelated conversation sure i i agree the issue is that like that was an unvoiced negotiation that probably need to be stated. And I would agree that probably Brittany needed to spearhead it when she was like noticing these things. I think that that's all super fair. All I'm speaking to is like why the disconnect was happening to such a high level. Sure. Um, I, I think I agree with that. Right. Yeah. Okay. But then it that's also, it I'm feels, it feels, yeah. I think that that's a tall ask of me because it puts me in an awkward spot where I've got to like damn somebody's like, are you okay to have this I conversation? I should have spearheaded it. Sure. I already okay. said Brittany should have spearheaded it. Gotcha. Right? I think okay. that she should have. And I think like looking back now that she realizes, like she just said, she's like, oh, okay. So when I talk to Steven, I need to say, are we talking about individuals or are we talking about society? And I was like, yes. Right. <clears> she needs to clarify with you specifically 
what are we talking about here, right? Because I imagine if you were in Britney's shoes and she was talking about the individual, you wouldn't recommend going to an individual being like, yeah, but are you sexually liberated? So like, isn't that a protective factor? Of course not. Yeah, obviously. Of course not. Obviously, right? But the issue is that like she was hearing it through that lens and she wasn't really jumping into like society stuff because she just like in her head, she's like, I don't give a fuck about society at all because society means a very, very restrictive thing to her. Sure. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I understand. I think that was essentially my takeaway that she felt like I was like personally demeaning her experience of telling her that she needed to get over it or something, which is probably how I guess it would have come up. But again, it's it's the same as jumping into somebody giving financial advice and then you come and you ask a couple questions about like IRAs that you're curious about and then you like go personally like do all of these things because you thought they were talking about you. Like it, was, it wasn't it wasn't the conversation, I guess, which is frustrating. Um, right. Okay. Is there, <clears throat> I don't think I'm wrong about anything I've said so far. I think that there are risk factors and there are protective factors that make it more or less likely for you to be traumatized. <laughs> I like that by, language, hey? Um, yeah, sure, because I want to use this because you said the retarded thing of like, oh, he's not trauma informed. I don't think I've said anything that contradicts any research I've read ever. I'm treading lightly in the conversation, but I keep hearing these phrases about it. The body keeps score, the body, blah, 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 bullshit. I don't think that trauma exists in the vacuum of your body. If you've ever seen anything that disagrees with that or anything that point, I pray to you to please link me because everything I've seen seems to be to the contrary. That trauma and trauma responses, save for like the most extraordinary things, like being extendedly torture gang but for like, in, in, for a lot of crazy stuff, a lot of it is heavily mediated by the society that you're in. That you're, whether or not you're religious, the type of upbringing you have, the type of adverse events you have as a child, your f genes, that all of these things heavily play into the likelihood of you being traumatized. And I keep hearing this repeated thing, the body keeps score, the body keeps score. Like that's somehow supposed to handle all the Well, actually, no, every single body has like a default set of like response to trauma. I don't think that's true at all. Tell me if I'm right or wrong or, or God, walk me down that path. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So, I, I'm getting frustrated because I'm having multiple people, I, women, do this thing where they email like, I don't think you know the research. I'm like, I don't know the research. I've read tons of articles on this shit and I've never seen anything. That's why I have the opinion that I do. But then people think, say things like, oh, you haven't seen the research. I'm like, well, have you read these seven books? I was like, no, but I don't think you have either. Link me a paragraph, link me a section, give me a chapter to read. I've never, ever, ever in my life seen anything that's contradicted anything that I'm saying ever. And I've always heard things that are contradicting the other things. I'm like, oh no, everybody has, everybody can have any response and subjective and ubiquitous responses to trauma, blah, blah, blah. I've never seen anything to support that ever. Okay. All I've seen okay. always is that trauma is complicated, <laughs> responses are complicated. We don't even know why some people get traumatized if you alone. Go ahead, cut me off, go. Sorry, go okay. ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna start with, do you know what the limbic system is? Um, yes, what about it? Hormones and all that good shit. Yeah, we kind of like, really reductively, it's like the emotion center. It's yeah. not exclusively, but it, okay. The limbic system doesn't give a f about society. The limbic system cares about the body, right? It cares about your personal experience. And what Brittany is trying to say is like, even when you're talking at like a broadband level, it's not that she's like just worried about you demeaning her experience specifically. It's that a victim of trauma will hear that and their limbic system will react necessarily because the, the limbic system is not very good at parsing these things apart, right? And so what she's trying to say is like, she doesn't want you to use language that is going to cause victims of trauma to experience like greater dismissal because particularly in the case of sexual assault like one of the most common things that every sexual assault victim will say is typically some form of victim blaming they're going to question themselves maximally um how i could have done more i should have done more you know what was i like unironically what was i wearing what did i do to bring this on and then also questions about like was this even real because the limbic system is super super stupid um a lot of people keep talking about like the body what it what's the okay i need to separate these two books there's the bessel van der kolk book which is the one that everyone's referring to which is the body keeps the score which is a really good book in a lot of ways but it's also a really bad book because there's a lot of pseudoscience it's pop it. it's a pop science book i know it is i can just tell yes. by the name of it that it's a pop it's like the five minute body or whatever there's a lot of pop science books where they'll have these like nuggets of true things and then they extrapolate the fuck out of like single case studies or all. but i mean there might be some things that are true but like if there's a yes. part that's true that's important just cite me the chapter or the paragraph or the study that is citing that i can go there but and i hate it when people just go oh read this whole book it's like motherfucker i'm not gonna read the whole book you know that and two if you read the book you should be able to cite the part that's important about it right if somebody <laughs> asks me about something that i've read i don't understand when people do this Help me understand this fucking Kyla, okay? If okay. I read a study or if I read a book or if I see a movie and I go, I really like how this thing was expressed here. Um, I really liked uh, the characterization of fucking uh, nihilism uh, or absurdism or whatever in, in Albert Camus' The Stranger. And somebody's like, oh, well, what did you like about it? I would never in my entire life go, read the book. I would tell you that these are the parts that I appreciate it. This is why I appreciate it. This is why I feel the way I do about it. I hate it when people just say like, read the book because it makes me feel like you haven't read it or you didn't understand it. Sorry, go ahead. 
Sure. I'm, so I'm, my limbic say, system is highly activated right now. Go ahead. I can tell. I can tell. It's okay. I am a master uh, limbic worker. Oh, okay. hold on. Now you have a master's? Hello. Oh, yeah, I Hello. Do. Master's Hello. Degree President in, Sunday. <laughs> master in the house. Go in ahead. The limbic psychometry. Uh -huh. okay, okay. Go ahead. Limbic witchcraft. Okay. So a, a better book that people, so if people cite you a book, you can cite them back another book. I'll give you this, this weaponry, okay? Which is a better book about the body and trauma mm -hmm. is... Babette Rothschild, The Body Rumors. I brought this up to you sure. yesterday. Sure, yes. Because it's way better. Okay. As far as like individual studies, a lot of these individual studies, so the issue with like oh, just trauma, I don't real quick thing on that and then you can keep going. I'm just, I'm not looking for like ammunition to win a debate. I just want to know the information. I'm just curious what's, yeah. what's true or what's right, but go ahead, yeah. Okay, so I'll, I'm gonna map this on in two ways. I'm gonna talk about some of the research that I have seen, okay. but just to be clear, I'm obviously not an expert in trauma. By okay. Any means. Um, I'm just laying on the laurels of data. Most of the data on trauma is going to be dominantly self-report, mm -hmm. which is eh, at best, and epidemiological. Okay. What is really compelling to me is longitudinal epidemiological findings on people with trauma. Mm -hmm. And what we find is that they're at extremely high risks for things, I think I mentioned this yesterday, for things like IBS, right? Mm -hmm. They have higher levels of, uh, they develop like- Probably all, probably even rent. cancer, probably all sorts of medical outcomes, it wouldn't surprise me. All yeah. sorts, PCOS, yeah. all mm -hmm. sorts of things. In fact, like IBS and PCOS are in many ways viewed as kind of like trauma-related diseases. Interesting, right? okay. So we know, we don't, we don't, if you study the brain, the first thing any neuroscientist will tell you who studied the brain for like eight to 10 years, like way more than I have, is that we know nothing about the brain, sure. right? The more we research it, the less we know because the brain is super flexible, it's neuroplastic. Um, it's very interconnected. Could, There's not like one section very, only yeah. does one thing. Exactly, and yeah, yeah, you yeah, could yeah. just chop out a section and then other sections will be like, I'm gonna do that now, right? Like you could rebuild the vestibular system yeah. even if you pull out like 98% of the mm -hmm. like nerves related to it mm -hmm. using like people's tongue. It's fucking crazy. Brains are insane. But what we do know is that like, and this is why, for example, when I talk about my trauma and listening to this whole discourse has actually given me a, bit, a fair bit of insight into like my experience with my childhood sexual abuse, which I have no memories of. I just had body reactions. I have IBS, right? I'm prone to chronic illness. I'm extremely hypervigilant. My, my, my muscles are fucking tight all the time. So I'm very prone to sprains and injuries as well. Um, and I had like panic attacks when people touched me, even though I had no memory of this, right? Mm -hmm. In the case of like adult trauma, or at least post like your hippocampus coming online, you have both the bodily reactions, right? I think I'm a great example of like, in many ways, the bodily effects of the traumatic event itself, mm -hmm. right? Which is things like, high levels of vaginismus and all sorts of stuff that I've already outlined to you. Sure. But then in the case of somebody who also remembers the event, you have all of the psychological trauma that occurs afterwards as well, right? Mm -hmm. And the problem is at the individual level, you can't take normative findings and apply them very well, right? Even if I know a whole bunch of risk factors and protective factors, it doesn't mean that I can apply that super well and sophisticatedly to an individual to determine the level of trauma that they personally have experienced. You sure. can't really know. This is why, like I said to Brittany, you can have Cindy and Anne who experience the exact same thing. They just get their boob touched. Cindy, her entire world falls apart. Anne is like, eh, it's just like another day. Don't really care, right? Mm -hmm. This is why we can have like these different effects. This is in part probably because of risk and protective factors, but also things like personality types and even more fundamental and more kind of like subjective, their psychological expectation of the world, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Step one. Did I answer those, those questions about like body stuff? And you didn't and answer whatnot? any question that I didn't already know the answer to. Every single thing you've said, I've already believed, and I'm pretty sure I've stated as much. But go for it. I don't want to give you yeah. or anybody else in here a misconception that you said something new to me. I understand all of this, and I and I believe all of this. Yes, keep going okay. if you want. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad. I'm. I'm I'll keep speaking <clears throat> to the choir then. Good. That's good. So, That's fine. I think the main area where the breakdown happened is that even when you're talking at a societal level, mm -hmm. individuals hear it and they hear an individual analysis. Now there is a certain level of responsibility on the individual. You shouldn't hear people talking about sociological things and assume that they're talking about your individual experience with rape, right? Yeah. Okay. The issue is that in my mind, the aesthetic matters too, right? So when you're talking at a sociological level, you want to make sure that the aesthetic that you're coming across with to everyone is an aesthetic that communicates things like, I am in no way trying to say that your personal individual trauma 
is one way or the other because you can't comment on it. You don't know. Sure. I think in a lot of ways, what was occurring between you and Brittany is both the, she's not talking about society, she's talking about individuals and she's concerned about you demeaning the individuals in the way that you're talking. And also the element of also the aesthetic that you communicated, like saying things like crazy and stuff. A lot of time, I think to like- Wait, saying things like you. crazy? Wait, I never called her crazy, no? Or said a white victim was crazy. crazy. I can't remember what the specific words were. I, I really okay. can't. Okay, well, that's kind of important. Cause I'm saying like, oh, if, you, if you're traumatized by rape, you're crazy. That would be fucking insane for me to say, of course. Right. So it's not, it's not as simple as me saying, be nice. I'm not saying be nice. What I'm saying is, I think in the cases of trauma, you get into really dicey areas unless you're really precise about language, which is why when I said a lot of the same viewpoints that you have to Brittany, her and her audience could receive it, probably in part because I'm a woman with sexual assault history specifically, that already puts me on easier grounds because it immediately communicates an aesthetic to the audience of I understand you implicitly, right? Nobody is going to tell me that somebody who had like a sexual assault under two doesn't to some extent understand it, right? So I, I have that aesthetic already working for me. And then I was extremely precise in my language about using words like risk factors and protective factors, which in fairness, you just didn't have that language ammo, or at least you didn't use it at the time. Um, you were trying to communicate in that di direction. And I would agree, there should be a greater margin of error extended to you as well, because like these topics are spicy. Almost also be clear when you're saying, when you say greater margin of error, you mean, my me going above and beyond to protect another person that stumbled into a conversation that they didn't give adequate notice ahead of time was going to be triggering for them. This is what you mean when you say take greater care, right? No, when I'm saying extending, when I'm saying people need to extend you a greater margin of error, I'm oh. saying like just because you use imprecise language. Like well, sure, but I don't even think I'm, I don't think I'm, I don't think I said anything imprecisely. I think I just I didn't I wasn't talking like it was a therapy session. Sure. No, you got to either agree or disagree with that. If you feel like I said something that was imprecise or incorrect, then say like, oh, like you said this, it was wrong. Or you said this and it's just not true. Do you think that I spoke like it was a therapy session? Yes. Well, how so specifically? Uh, because you were trying to take into account their personal history something. You were trying to relate to them on an empathetic level. You were trying to make sure that their feelings were validated. You were trying to make sure that they felt like they weren't being attacked. That was your goal in that, which feels like a therapy session. Hi. Uh, hey. <laughs> Hi, Brittany. I just want to say for the record, I did not expect you in any way to treat me like anyone but a commenter and a content creator on your stream. Okay, but you came in to, the, to a conversation that was pretty heated, and now you like are saying it's like, oh, like he's dog whistling like conservative things about rapes, if you'll rape victims, if you'll blame, no. and it's like. I'm saying just for the record, in case mm -hmm. you don't know, that's, that's how it sounds, and now you are agreeing that the way you said things like, I don't know if you agree, but like, I'm just letting you know how they were hurt. I don't need you to change the way you speak. Like you okay. can do exactly the way you're doing it. Sure. You were fine to me on that stream. I didn't feel in any way like you were rude to me on that stream. Okay, hold on. I, wait, 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 mm -hmm. hold on. I just want to go back to completely yeah. disagree with what you just said that I agree now that I don't agree that I said or did anything wrong at all. Okay, I no, don't agree I'm not with saying that. You, okay. No, no, you didn't do anything wrong. This is not an ethics question. I didn't think you ethically did anything wrong, but I did, I do think you are wrong to assume like sexually liberated women and conservative women, unless you're having a different discussion that I'm having, which is more individual. How do we impact our culture and our bubble? Not like laws, because I don't know anything about laws, right? I'm just talking about like, how do you go about your day doing X, Y, and Z after X, Y, and Z happens? And the way you were talking about it made it sound like they should get over it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I just, and we that's, take I from totally him. disagree. I completely disagree. Which is why disagree. I came on to talk to you about it. But then you okay. came on my stream and then you did say, that you have a perspective, which is your right and your opinion, that you believe that X group experiences less trauma than X group. Yes. Okay, so that doesn't, that's where that we disagree. doesn't, hold on. There, that is a non sequitur to somebody ought to get over it. People can experience more or less trauma for a huge variety of reasons. Somebody might hear a, a, a TV turn on as a childhood, like before they get beaten every day. And now when they hear a TV turn on, they get freaked the fuck out and they expect like there's like a Pavlovian reaction. That, that yeah, doesn't mean they sure. deserve to get over it. And they have to, that's, you're extrapolating that based on things that other people have said. I've never leaned into that ever. And I've spoken plenty of times in the exact opposite. For sure. I just, the reason I said that, and again, I'm happy to like reword myself, but you said, and I correct me if I'm wrong, why can't a girl just go to a party and like get assaulted and the next day be like, oh shoot, like I guess he got one up on me. Like you said that you're, in it's interesting that they can't just 
move past it, why do you think that is, right? Is that kind of the example you gave? Am I wrong? It's It kind of is, but you're reading into it so incorrectly. When, well, then tell, when, that's what when I'm saying. I, when I a- say, why can't somebody do this, you're phrasing it as like, why don't you just do this? My question is generally, why can't somebody do that? Because it yeah. seems like they can't. But when, when I ask that question, implied in that question is that you can't do it. Whereas you're reading it in the slang sense of like, why don't you just get over that? When I'm asking, why can't somebody get over that? It's a, and it's an interesting question because there sure. are some things that we get over pretty well. Some things that may be even traumatizing, but it seems we get over. And there are other things we don't get over really well. And I'm just curious why we don't get over some things. But you're hearing it as an attack. When I don't think I've ever given any indication that I'm attacking rape victims or expecting them to get over it. No, I... Totally. I'm just letting you know that again, because even my chat's like, but that's what he said. He's literally saying it right now. So again, we can hear your perspective, but I need you to understand that it's it takes a lot of work to make sure that you don't mean the different tone. And so that's why I called to check in. And then I was like, okay. But I, I, again, you can do you. I'm just letting you know as from the experiences I've had, and again, anecdotally speaking, it is. I can't trust what you're saying because now I don't have any evidence that you would also, like I don't have enough evidence to counter that thought as a possible, like I, obviously you're a good person, bro. I don't think you're not a good person. I don't think you're gonna rape anyone, obviously, bro. Like I've been in your house. I would never think that. But that doesn't mean that the way you're communicating couldn't be appro- improved upon to clarify your position without you like getting, like you're yelling right now. I'm but yelling I'm right who- now because I think I was incredibly clear. Kyla just repeated everything back to you verbatim that I said yesterday, and you agreed with all of it and pretended like it was substantively different than what I've said. And because now well, people have this impression, it was almost verbatim some of the things she was saying. With like she said that Yas Queen comment, and I think when I gave that exact thing, I think you pushed my card against it and you bought what she said 100 percent It was the exact same thing that I said. That sometimes people can reinforce your trauma by Yas Queen you too hard, and it's probably not a good thing. When she said it, you agreed 100 percent and you totally fought against me when I said it. And then you started well, repeating a lot of the things that I said, that, that d- the ways that people are raised in society and the way that people are told about things can influence how they are perceiving trauma or other trauma responses they have. Sorry, go ahead. I think, could I suggest that I think there's kind of two things that are occurring that keep causing like the, the missing of each other. I could be wrong. And if you want me to shut up, I'll just step out instead. Talk, girl, talk. In my view, I think there's kind of two things going on. I already said the aesthetic piece. I think Brittany probably unironically, I immediately communicate an aesthetic that's going to be you're going to take my words at my words and not at the possible implications of my words because i'm a sexual assault victim myself and i'm probably a woman so you're and i'm like somewhat mental health informed and therefore like i i talk like somebody who's in that world a lot so i in any ways in every way kind of communicate an aesthetic of like safe not trying to judge and empathetic to your situation whereas like i think in a lot of ways steven doesn't always communicate that aesthetic, but I think also is at a disadvantage for communicating that aesthetic as well. When I think like he's trying to, in many ways, I think he's like earned the rapport to be taken at his words um, and like clarified for like what his words are possibly implying if you're like not sure about it. I'm not sure mm-hmm. if that's fair though. Look, I don't think Steven is advocating for rape. Like that's not what I'm saying. And I do admit that I was actually like, I'm, I'm gonna call it a mini trigger the day I called you and I should have just waited a day, thought about it and called you now. Um, But now I've thought about it and I've waited a day and I've re-listened to the stream and I'm kind of feel like, yeah, it wasn't the best worded conversation and I think it could have happened differently, but you did feel extremely dismissive to anyone who didn't agree to you, agree with you. Because I'm looking for, because I need real answers to questions that I have. You're talking like a policymaker, right? You're being really frank. And when you're using words, you're using very precise words. Like you're intentionally asking the questions in the way that you are, but you're not implying it in the way that some policymakers are implying when they say things like, why can't they just get over it? You're obviously not implying that. You're asking like direct questions. But I think the issue is that when you give the aesthetic, especially as a man and sounding like a policymaker for people who've experienced that trauma, like that aesthetic is something that's really hard to get over. And I'm not saying that like they're right for not getting over it or that you're wrong for doing that. I'm just saying this is probably why the miscommunication happens. I don't think anyone is wrong in this situation. I mostly just think it's a miscommunication. Yeah. And also with policymaking, just in this regard, if there is a policy to be made, you kind of make it sound like sexually liberated people should get less of a focus. 
And that's why that's interesting to me because there doesn't seem to be anything that I understand that they don't need as much help you're, as anyone else. You're so hung up on the one example. No, that's okay. But but, but hold okay. on, wait, but if but if what I said is true, then they should get more of the focus. Yes. That's how we okay, treat these types of things. Fine. No, 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 no. I'm right. It's not just an opinion. People that are more negatively impacted by some things should get more of the focus than other people, right? If there are a group of people walking into the water and they can't swim, they should have more flotation devices than the ones that can. I don't like the idea right. that the saying of like, well, everything is the same and everybody's blah, blah, blah. And that is absolutely not true, especially when it comes to trauma. And the idea that all of this treated the same is because everybody can everything is not only wrong, it's like unhealthy and dangerous because different people do respond differently to different things. And it's important to be able to account for that. That's why when somebody's diagnosed with like PTSD or CPSD, they have to take an inventory. They have to take an assessment. It's not just you come in and say, I'm traumatized and they're all treated the exact same. Okay, so just to clarify, if two people are raped before we help either, we should see who got raped worse. That, I, I, I'm, Oh God! Hold on! I'm he's, trying not to he's say. Talking out of, no! He's talking out of. No! Hold on! I'm trying to answer okay. this question without fucking going full nuclear. Okay. What I'm saying is that if two people got raped when they're evaluated by a psychologist or a psychiatrist or therapist, whoever the fuck is evaluating them, there probably are predictive things that you're looking for to see what are more likely outcomes. So, for instance, let's say two people come in and they both say that they got raped, and let's say one person says, "Yeah." I got raped and also I got laid off by my job and I've had some suicidal ideation in the past. I don't feel bad right now and I also have like depressive disorder, whatever. That person, maybe the therapist looks at their notes or they do they have their research. Program. These people are like 95% more likely to try to kill themselves after rape. Yes, that person would be treated differently. Yes. Based yeah, on their okay. history and the predictive agree. factors. I agree with that, but the so I agree, but I but Again. the way that I said it makes it sound like we should just tease people that got raped and are sluts and then take people seriously that are conservative. Brittany, that is the most insane reading of what I'm saying ever. Like even the way you're phrasing it is like, so you're saying if two people come in and they got raped and one of them wore a crazy dress and the other one, uh, you know, wore a totally formal dress that the person that was, you know, dressed more professionally should be taken more seriously. I'm not saying anything remotely close to that. Like there's no world where I'm saying something like that. No, I know that. But did you go to your Reddit and read the posts and comments from your guys? Um, not yet. Because a lot of them were like, Destiny's right. Getting raped isn't as bad as getting beat up. And I was like, okay, guys, we can't be like playing the who got hurt more game when it's like every person's going to have a different relationship with their trauma. No. The point is, Sorry, I go, understand. Finish. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, just so finish. what I'm saying is, I understand that I was in my feelings. I'm fully admitting it when I initially called you. But now that I've had time to observe mm -hmm. and go on your Reddit and see what people were saying, there is a split in conversation. But ultimately, the way you're phrasing things, which is fine, you can do that, is going to sound confusing because it still sounds like you're, like I understand you wanna build a hierarchy, but again, my focus is how do we help as many people as possible? And it doesn't matter who's sure. in line first. Help it, because, no, helping yeah. as many people as possible sometimes requires building a hierarchy, right? Absolutely. From a societal perspective. Wait, how can you keep saying, how can you keep agreeing with what I'm saying? The exact opposite of what you're saying. Because we're because talking she's about talking different about things. Individuals. She's talking so about trying... like her as an individual. Even as she's... an individual, it would be the same. If I had two children and one came to me and their arm was chopped off and the other one had a paper cut, I'm triaging. I'm going to treat like, like with the medical research I have, the one who's bleeding out of their body. Even on an individual okay. level, what I'm saying is true. I'll give you an example. My sister and I grew up in the same family because she was a straight A student and never caused trouble. Her, her like all her trauma was neglected because I was an, a loud child. I threw tantrums. I rebelled. My parents gave me all the attention. And then it wasn't until my sister hit her 20s that they were like, oh, shit, we neglected one of our kids because we thought she was in less pain. And what I'm saying is just because it looks like they're in less pain doesn't mean they are. Or maybe they're just in a different kind of extreme pain that's the same but different. So I'm just more focused on not forgetting that even if trauma doesn't look traumatic, I get neglected all the time in different ways because I'm like so strong and stuff. People are like, Brittany doesn't need help. Brittany doesn't need help. Now that I'm older, but that doesn't mean I don't need help or people doesn't don't need help. I'm just trying to be open and considerate of different personalities, different like ways people present themselves. And I'm totally fine with you doing you in your bubble in your world. I'm just letting you know as a friend, when I heard it, I was like, oh, that feels weird. And I don't think that's the Steven I know. And so now that we're getting clarifiers, I'm great with everything you're saying in this bubble for that solution, but it wouldn't work in mine because I'm focused on the individual, but I appreciate your efforts on a global, on a internet, no, national level. Is that okay? Like, I'm okay with your thoughts as long as you understand that like, 
it just wouldn't work for all people, just the people you're kind of focusing on. Sure, I just totally disagree. I think it would work for all people. Okay. I don't think you've said a single thing that contradicts anything I've said whatsoever. I don't know why it's you think about, that, I don't think that some people can't have hidden either. trauma or that some people can't, I'm not saying we should ignore some people. Um, I think everything I'm saying applies on a, on a personal and on a societal level. Kyla, if you wanna tell me something I'm, you think I'm wrong about, go for it, come in, okay? It's not about you being wrong. It's not about me saying, I'm not saying, Destiny, it sounds like you're saying X, which is wrong. It's what it, what's really being communicated is Destiny, it sounds like you are somebody who would be saying X, right? Okay. Whereas when I'm speaking, it's like, I, I know I know you're laughing, but it's like, of course the way that like you yep. communicate these things are going to influence the way that like, especially audiences that aren't warm to you are going to like receive the words, right? I know it's silly. I know it should be like something that people don't care about, but you would agree that people only typically care about like the first two inches of, of like how people present. Sure. Yes, yeah, did that go through? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are we doing today, guys? <laughs> Good. I'm glad we're talking. I was really scared you weren't going to talk to me again when chat was like, he's not going to talk to her. And I was like, oh, no. Ready? I'll always talk to you, okay? Thanks. I appreciate it. I don't want to burn a bridge when this is a great example of how to, like, um, build, like, you know, mesh bubbles and build bridges. And, like, this is a great example of how are we both trying to help people in different ways? And then do we need to step on each other's toes or should we actually stay out of each other's business and help who are helping? That's, okay. like, a great, I think, a question I'm thinking about. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, thanks for letting me uh, scream and wild out for a little bit, okay? Yeah, we love it. We love uh, we love it. <laughs> okay. Okay. We good? Yep. Be careful. Okay. Okay. Have a good day, guys. Yep. Okay, bye. Bye. Tell me what I'm wrong about. Am I wrong about anything? I think it I applies. You were, I, hold on. I have been saying from the very beginning, and your chat's going to fucking lose their brain. I am not saying you're saying something wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying that at okay. all. Okay. All right. A at all the i just i sound insensitive you're, hold on yeah you're no it's more important than that oh, okay not only are you right but people need to be able to hear it okay. that's what matters here you are correct and it is fundamental that people hear this because this is something that you were correct about that society is failing in the yas queening shit is bad right and the dismissing people's right is bad so we need as a society a more like i don't know just prop, not even more sophisticated, just a better way of how we're approaching these types of conversations. And the issue is, in my mind, it's like an unironic, like, I hate even having to do this, but it's like, the main thing is that like, on a topic like this, I think if you're not really mindful of the way that like, you sound when you communicate it, you're going to fall on deaf ears. And I think like, this is the exact advice that you would probably give me, for example, like, when I go on Fresh and Fit, there are two ways that I can approach a conversation with them about like, women. Right? One way is going to communicate to them that I'm a feminazi who hates men. And another way is going to communicate, I understand your side, blah, 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 blah. Even though I'm saying the same shit. <clears throat> because of course how you sound matters. Like, of course they do. And anyone in chat- Okay, you know what? Are you, like an listen. Actual okay, like, I don't know what else here, to say. are you ready? Are you bored? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay, can I pay you for work? Uh, Possibly. Okay, I'm I will pay yes you I verbal contract. I'll give you a hundred dollars. Okay, if you want to go through like twenty or thirty minutes of my video with Brittany, and can you tell me where I say something where it's like, oh, Stephen, when you said this, it kind of sounds like you want women to get raped and you're blaming them for it. I want. Can you? I want you to. Can you do okay, that for I'm me? Never, I just I'm want never you to. Going to I just want to hear. I just want to hear a part where I'm like you should have phrased this I'm better, or you should have. Okay, I'm being hyperbolic, but like one you part where you're like when you say something like this, it comes off like this. I'm just super curious because it because the sure. my perception of it. I'm gonna kill you first. My perception of it is that there's a. It's a lot of like personal feelings and sensitivity on the other side that like, I don't think I can, I don't think I can um, uh, accommodate. I, I don't think I can reasonably accommodate in that conversation. I think the only answer would be to just not talk about these things. That's what it feels like. Sure, I, I, I sure, I will, you don't need to pay me. I will absolutely look through and see if there's anything. Uh, it's possible that I'm completely wrong and I'm just like, in my own feelings because of like Destiny's my friend, but it's it's not to me about like rhetoric or tone specifically. Well, what you're talking about right now is exactly rhetoric and tone. That's exactly what we're talking about. 
I'm not. I'm not trying to talk about that. I'm well, I don't care what you're to trying to. But that's what we're we're saying. That like, listen, the type like we're. It's literally a what is it? Ethos or pathos or whatever. Like the person that you are makes you harder to sympathize with when you talk about these types of sexual assaults. Um, people have heard other things in the past from people that say these types of things. Therefore, they might mix up. So you need to be careful to like couch your language in as much understanding discourse as possible, or be aware of this, or make this concession. Blah blah blah. Like it's all like, I'm not, and that's not rhetoric's not necessarily bad, but I, but that is fundamentally because if you're saying like, oh well, I think that you're correct about everything you're saying. They just like for some reason people might misinterpret or whatever. Like that's it feels like that's what we're right. talking about. Not that that's sure. bad. I'm not trying to. Yeah, I'm not sedging yeah. you. Yeah, it's not who you are. It's about some people not believing you're saying something that you're not. Right. It's about people reading into implications because you are talking like the way somebody who would be talking when they mean this. Sure. It's just about that, right? It's it's the it's the friend who acts like a persnickety old man when they're actually like super super kind. Sure. Um, this the, it's the part of my um, asshole, even though they're not. Yeah, it's, it's the I wrote. There was a small part of my huge Vosh anti Vosh manifesto where or anti what was it? I think it was a Vosh manifesto um, where I had written about that. There's a problem where we are so scared of certain conversations that just by saying certain things, when we get so obsessed with dog whistles, we like think that somebody's being like hardcore bigoted when they're not. Contra points gave an example of one of her videos where there was an image of a white lady holding a white child and it says we need to protect our future. And her first response was, holy shit, this is a Nazi ad. But it was just like some like fucking like homeless adoption shit or something, right? Because like we get like so hardcore into like, if you say anything or, but that I think that reinforces my earlier point where it feels like if you even ask the question, of like, can our backgrounds mediate our trauma responses? That like, you're oh, you're blaming rape victims. I, like, I don't think that's fair. I think that's an insane reaction, but it's I think that's super normalized in society. Or like, do black people go to prison because they commit more crime? Like, if you say that, it's like, oh my God, you're racist. You're a race realist. You hate, like, it's just like instant. And it's like, I, I think that that's a problem. That's like a bad thing. Yes, I would agree that it is a bad thing. Um, because people are so quick to like outhand dismiss. I, yeah, I and then the conversation that. can't even happen, right? Or like yes, maybe boys but, need more help in school. Like that's a conversation okay. we can't even have in society and it's horrible. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. But what would you say if, for example, I went on Fresh and Fit and in every way I said everything that I had said, but I said it in like, I communicated it with a very different aesthetic. So like rather than- I'd be than hypercritical phrasing, of you. Yeah, why? Because you're entering another domain where the expected behavior is gonna be far different. If right. I went onto so, a panel and the panel was like, this is a whole bunch of sexual assault survivors, let's talk. My conversation is going to be way fucking different than me talking to my stream about how I feel or, or about questions that I have about these things. I would never in my life go up to a rape victim and be like, do you think that maybe if you weren't such a prude about sex, you wouldn't have cared about getting raped so much? I would never say that in my life. That's an insane thing to say, right? Right. But if you were talking on your stream about something... I wouldn't be like, Kyla, when you say these things, uh, people like Fresh and Fit, they're going to think that you're being totally fucking crazy. Because I imagine you say, okay, yeah, well, when I'm on Fresh and Fit, I would act in a different way. But this is just me talking to my audience on my stream. Sorry, go ahead. Right. The issue is that, like, when we're talking about tone and rhetoric, it feels like an acute issue. I'm not really talking about an acute issue. I'm talking about, like, a chronic issue. Like, the whole general energy of, like, pick me, right? Mm -hmm. And if I have an chronic aesthetic so not acutely but let's imagine i go into a feminist panel and i use all the right rhetoric and tone and everything but when they go to my channel they see constant shit that's very pick me energy right i have a chronic aesthetic now where even even when i'm communicating in a different way even if i'm using better tone and rhetoric and entering the domain they're going to hear something different right i Understand what you're saying. I asked a question of you last night when we were playing, I think, um, or when I was playing, sorry. Um, yeah. I asked you that question of, do you think it's possible to make yourself exist in a world of clips? Can, can you actually um, accommodate every 30 second section of your speech? And I think you reasonably said, no, you probably, it's probably not possible. I don't think I can present um, chronically, I don't think I can present a character that will survive acutely every single situation I'm in. I think that the reality is, is there are gonna be some hats that I wear where some people are gonna see me and they're gonna go, this motherfucker is insane. I saw Destin, he was the kindest, nicest person ever when he was talking about black women. And now here he is on a progressive panel saying, maybe we can't blame slavery for every single problem with the black community. I thought this guy loved black people. And now he sounds like a fucking conservative. That's just the reality of, uh, of existing on all the different platforms. But I think that's gonna be true of every human being ever. It's just more out front when we're humans, right? The way that you would act with a boyfriend or girlfriend is gonna be way different than how you'd act in church or how you'd act mm -hmm. in front of their parents or how you'd act in front of teachers or how you'd act in front of your children. 
right? Mm -hmm. Like if my child had access to me, 20, well, I guess I'm not a good example because I'm a streamer, so they do. But like imagine if your child had access to you 24 seven, there would be a lot of stuff that you would, it would have a really hard time like, well, listen, like that's where all the like, well, sometimes when adults are doing this, like it's different or sometimes adults don't mean the things they say, but like it's impossible to exist in a chronic manner where every, where it would survive every single acute interaction, in my opinion. Sure. Yeah. So, are uh, you hearing me say that I'm saying that you're doing something wrong or that you need to change something? Yes. Are you okay. not saying that? That is not. That's oh, not you're just I'm telling saying. me what's happening? I'm telling you what is happening. You can, like, I'm just telling you what is happening. This is why people are coming away with this. Generally, you're chronic, like, aesthetic, right? People don't think, for example, that you're a guy who flies out 20 girls every week and fucks them and, like, flies them home and ignores them for the rest of the like, Because you don't give, you don't give that vibe to people. Even though you're rich, you're young, you're famous, you're charismatic, you're decently handsome, right? You just don't communicate that to anyone. No one would really think about that. I'm really not here trying to say, you need to change how you appear. It's just, all I'm saying is, in the conversation, for example, with Brittany, I get that she was coming into your space, but in a conversation where you've, people are already wondering about like, how much of an asshole, how you're cold about things, then you're talking to a rape victim and you're asking questions that communicate an aesthetic that some people are not going to like, be able to hear what you're actually saying and some people won't buy it. In that situation, if you wanted to counter that happening, you could juxtapose your current conversation against your general appearance. So in the general appearance, you appear cold, kind of like chill, um, you ask questions, but like you're like oftentimes, sometimes communicate like a disinterest and you're just like, you kind of like suss through things in a very like kind of like logical way more exclusively, right? If that's like the general aesthetic that people have of you, if you're talking to a rape victim and you wanted to appear like somebody who wasn't saying X or Y or appearing in some sort of way, you could juxtapose it. You don't have to, I don't I don't care either way. I have heard what you said and I'm not judging you necessarily on your words, but I am saying that this is what's happening. Sure, I like I kind of understand what you're saying. Um, I, 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 I think... Because uh... aesthetics is function. Like it's not aesthetics over function. It's not like anything. Like yeah, I, this is. And, and this I'm is, not telling this you that is, to be different. Okay, I'll be selfish now right now. Okay, because this plays into our conversation last night. I think I need sure. to make the ask. I I think the thing is I would have a higher expectation of a friend. I guess that would be my thing. If I heard okay. Britney saying something that sounded fucking wild, um, I would never go in and be like, "Oh, Britney, it sounds like you fucking hate men." Right. So like yesterday, I could have said, um, "Britney." I think you actually fucking hate men. The way that you played up the fight that your brother got in, you think it's cool that guys get jumped? Like, you don't see that men are the victims of violent crime like 10 times more than women? You don't see that men are, are getting locked in prison? Like, I could have gone down that road, but I don't think Britney thinks that, right? But she did say exactly the type of thing, a woman romanticizing male violence, that like would play perfectly into that like misandrist narrative. But I don't think Britney's that kind of person. I would never, I would never assume. If I really thought that, I might like shoot her a message and be like, you don't actually think that like, getting into fights is like the cool thing about being a guy or whatever, right? Like, but I, I don't think she does. I think that was just the way she was going to start. So I guess I would just, I feel like if somebody comes on, especially a friend, and is like, I think you sound like a conservative that is just telling women to get over rape. And it's like, what? That's just, it's just like such an unbelievable um, feeling of me. It's like getting misgendered, I guess. Like the, yeah. whatever exists of me in your mind is so fucking different than what I would have assumed you would have thought of me. That's just insane to me. But okay. I, that's, yeah. I guess that's just my feeling, I guess. Now I'm in my yeah. feelings, okay? <laughs> you're like, it, like, it's unfair. That's fine. Uh, you're like, like, it's unfair. Like you're kind of upset. Like why would my friend take my words over my, like why would you take my words or like the implications of what you think my words are over my obvious known intentions of mm -hmm. me as a person? I think that that's super fair. Thanks for fucking validating my fucking feelings, okay? Doesn't make me feel any better, but thanks, okay. I know it doesn't you make a... you feel any better, <laughs> sure. but I, I think like this is a different conversation and I think mm. that this is actually a really valuable conversation, right? Because I don't, I don't, if you're like, if we go back to the aesthetic one, if you're just saying, well, I can't do anything about the aesthetic, that's just is what it is and I don't really care, that's fine, right? But the second conversation is, I don't really like that my friend would assume something so like, like nasty of me when she should know better because she knows me. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a really important conversation. And in fact, like this is ex like this is an expressly important conversation. Like Nick and I have had this exact conversation in the past where like he was like I wish you could just like not just hear like my words and the possible implications of what it could sound like, mm -hmm. but that you would like take my words into context of who you know me to be. I think that's a very important conversation to have with somebody. Okay. Anything else? I are you are you gonna make the ask? 
<laughs> probably not. Maybe I will. I don't know. We'll see. Well, it's public now, so I mean, she's probably aware that the asks exist. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe I think it's probably just around this one topic. I don't think it'll come up again, but. I mean, I think it's really fair to say, please stop treating me like a misogynistic asshole who would dismiss question, dismiss women and question rape victims. I think that that's a pretty fair ask and a good ask to make of your friends. True. Okay. I'll draft that up tonight. I'll see. <laughs> I feel sending it over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what? What's going on? I'll just, yeah, I just need to, yeah, I need to do that. Yeah. Fulcrum. Say I had a fulcrum. He's on YouTube chat. Hi, fulcrum. Thank Who's you. Fulcrum? fulcrum? He's the guy exactly. that sends us all to Yodi land. We all go and talk about sexual assault, I guess. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> anything right. else, Chief? What's the What's the resistance? Are you gonna Are you gonna ask? I mean, I don't have to. I'm just curious about the like. Now that we've gotten to this point, it seems like you're like, ah, oh, fuck. Like it's like annoying, or like you're not that interested, and I'm curious. It just feels cringe. Cringe? Yeah. How so? Just it just does. It just feels cringe. Like to have like basically being like, oh, damn, like part of this was like an feels emotion. like I should just get over it. That's what it feels like. Oh, my gosh. It happens. I can be an asshole sometimes. Fuck it. What is a no path? But that, <laughs> that's not how feelings work. <laughs> Emotions aren't cringe. <clears throat> they just are. They just exist. Yeah, but following them is the cringe part. That's why we go the way of the lone wolf. We just play no. Sigma male affirmations for 12 hours and we're fucking nah, good Nah, that go. shit's cringe. That shit's cringe. Nah, like good wisdom, nah, good wisdom nah. is taking logic and emotions and like incorporating them together to figure out the best direction forward. Emotions are based. Okay. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of the thing that powers our whole lives, huh? Yep. Diffusing with humor is cringe. All right. <laughs> Me? <laughs> no shot. Mm. Nah, right nah, mm. no shot. Mm. Not me. I would never uh -oh. do that. Uh oh, Ooh, that Oof. sounds like someone has a problem confronting Oof. feelings and emotions and shit, and they just try to use humor to get out of it until the other person leaves the call. <laughs> been yeah, fun, Kyla. Sure see you. Talk to you later, buddy. <laughs> see you later. Okay. Bye. You leave you in your avoidance. Yep. See you later, Kyla. Have fun. Yeah, diffusing with humor is cool. for blue-haired piss true. babies. True. Absolutely true. Afraid of emotions. True. Yep. Yep. Bye. Yeah. Have fun. Okay. Bye. Have See fun you later. with your emotions. Bye. Bye. Absolutely fucking destroyed. Don't ever let her come back and think she can do anything, okay? But get annihilated on my stream. Okay. Where, where were we at? We were watching a Vouch. We were watching a Vouch video. Triggered out of my mind today. What is this? Oh, good joke. Good one, Linus. Okay. No, I should read this. Okay, we were here. Uh, attempting and suicidal ideation. And when you <sighs> pass anti trans bills that make it more difficult for them to avail themselves of the medical or other services that may help them, you increase the odds that they will attempt suicide and thus one could argue that those bills are in a sense I have no a genocide is is that like roughly the way one would do it is that how you i actually disagree with that line for oh me God, actually the was... root of it would be in bathroom bills that was where this all started and i think that might have been like where this is going like that's kind of the end point right so uh the the, the bathroom bills like the <gasps> whole you have to use your biological bathroom you use your biological porcelain toilet bowl or whatever the idea there, I think, is actually one of the most sort of um, fundamentally genocidal because it completely precludes trans people from existing in a public space. Most bathrooms are gender separated publicly, meaning that if you introduce legislation 
that could lead to them being arrested if they use the restroom they want to use. But then you whip up a big, like, anti-trans moral panic that increases the likelihood of them being assaulted if they use the bathroom the state says they should use. The truth is that they're just not going there to use go. public restrooms. And that sounds like a trivial thing, but, and I understand this may come across as a bit hyperbolic, but I fully mean it. We have to understand how much, like, removal from public uh, faculties was a component of Jim Crow era segregation. Uh, there's a lot of weight socially to going like, okay, these institutions, these banal, everyday, ordinary human institutions uh, that everyone else takes for granted, you don't get to use them. Not just because it's circumstantially difficult, the way it might be for, say, a disabled person, where there's just maybe some physical difficulty in using them. That's unfortunate, but uh, it's also kind of a component. Right. What the fuck? Yo, it's a Zoomer fuckboy pig. Yo! He got the Zoomer fuck... Wait. <laughs> oh, no. My hair is not like that. That's not what my hair is like. Okay. Opponent of the disability. No, in this case, the state is deliberately, for no reason, removing them from that space. And to, to, the, to my mind, that just reminds me more of the logic behind segregation. I mean, not to mention, we've talked about this on stream. You guys have been seeing this, right? Like DeSantis, uh, uh, um, like threatening to arrest teachers who have gender ideology in their classrooms, whether it be in books in the library or in the classroom or, or anything that's said, you know, opening up teachers to being like scrutinized by insane boomer right-wing parents uh if, if ever they say anything remotely progressive on on gender or sexual issues like uh, uh, uh oh um uh the, the laws recently to ban i forget which state to ban um drag performances to put them in the same category as like pornography obviously when republicans draft this legislation it's not really just targeted at drag oklahoma it's targeted at any kind of like gender divergent behavior wow. keep in mind it wasn't that long ago that in say new york city the police could arrest you for deviance if you were wearing three articles of clothing that quote didn't belong to your gender so if you can so we, have, we have precedent for this stuff you know now technically that doesn't that that law doesn't mention trans people right like that that like hundred year old law or whatever it doesn't say like yeah if you're trans we'll arrest you but you know, three articles of clothing that are the other gender. Like, we know what this actually means, don't we? We're not dumb. I would consider what I'm talking about here, considering the fact that it's part of a deliberate state orchestrated effort to specifically target one minority group, I can comfortably call that a genocide. I'm okay with it. Like, I, I, I think I can defend that just fine. Because the definition, again, can include, like, an effort to bring about in whole or in part like an unlivable like a, like a, an unlivable state of affairs to 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 make life just unlivably difficult for a group of people i mean donald trump was literally just saying federally ban all trans health give his ideas cuz i agree why am i getting sucked so into this so that's what i am concerned about if he's my friend why yeah. isn't he validating even one ounce right so that's fine, but yeah, we can watch it if you'd like, but I'm embarrassed about it, girl. Uh, the the last bit, the emotional stuff? All of it, like me talking to Steven the other day, you mean? We need to get Lab's opinion oh. on this. <laughs> oh wait, what are you talking about? Wait, why are you, Im I'm just saying the last five minutes of my conversation with Steven. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought you meant the last five com five minutes of the conversation I had with him where I was emotional. No, 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 no. Oh, I totally, okay, sorry. I'm not I'm emotional talking... today. Like I'm yeah, not yeah, yeah, triggered no, at all today. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, I know. let's I mean, I yeah, the triggered. last minute, and then I can fix up my water, but I'm- Okay, yeah, okay, let me pull it up. Can you hear it if I play it? Uh, Bad, okay. but, I, but I that is there. fundamental. Okay. I went to a panel, <laughs> so, yeah. let's- Every single- Exit. Oh, okay. oh my god, he's talked so uh, much. I feel any okay. I mean, yeah, yeah. If I heard okay. Britney saying something that sounded fucking wild. Uh, he I'm said, if mean... I heard Britney saying something fucking wild, should I start there? Um, The five minutes back or whatever, the point where you basically heard me be like, yeah, but like, um, like, um, that's fair. Where you were, where you were at before, just keep watching it to the end. In the conversation, okay. for example, with Britney, and I'm going to mute my mic because we're going to blend this movie. Yeah, okay, go for it. 
Go just coming it. into your space. But in a conversation where you, people are already wondering about like how much of an asshole, how you're cold about things, then you're talking to a rape victim <laughs> and you're asking questions that communicate an aesthetic that some people are not going to like be able to hear what you're actually saying. And some people won't buy it. In that situation, if you wanted to counter that happening, you could juxtapose your current conversation against your general appearance. So in the general appearance, you appear cold, kind of like chill, um, you ask questions, but like you're like oftentimes, sometimes communicate like a disinterest and you're just like, you kind of like suss through things in a very like kind of like logical way more exclusively, right? If that's like the general aesthetic that people have of you, if you're talking to a rape victim and you wanted to appear like somebody who wasn't saying X or Y or appearing in some sort of way, you could juxtapose it. You don't have to. I don't I don't care either way. I have heard what you said and I'm not judging you necessarily on your words, but I am saying that this is what's happening. Sure. I like I kind of understand what you're saying. Um I I I, I think uh... Cuz aesthetics is function. Like it's not aesthetics over function. It's not like anything. Like yeah, I, this is. And, and this I'm not telling is, you this is, to be Okay, I'll be selfish now, right now. Okay, because uh, this plays into a conversation last night. I think I need sure. to make the ask. I I think the thing is I would have a higher expectation of a friend. I guess that would be my thing. If I heard okay. Brittany saying something that sounded fucking wild, um, I would never go in and be like, oh, Brittany, it sounds like you fucking hate men, right? So like yesterday, I could have said, um, Brittany. I think you actually fucking hate men. The way that you played up the fight that your brother got in, you think it's cool that guys get jumped? Like, you don't see that men are the victims of violent crime like 10 times more than women? You don't see that men are, are getting locked in prison? Like, I could have gone down that road, but I don't think Britney thinks that, right? But she did say exactly the type of thing, a woman romanticizing male violence, that like would play perfectly into that like misandrist narrative. But I don't think Britney's that kind of person. I would never, I'm never gonna assume. If I really thought that, I might like shoot her a message, be like, you don't actually think that like, getting into fights is like the cool thing about being a guy or whatever, right? Like, but I, I don't think she does. I think that was just the way she was saying, sorry. So I guess I would just, just, I feel like if somebody comes on, especially a friend, and is like, I think you sound like a conservative that is just telling women to get over rape. And it's like, what? Sorry, That's that was just, me. It's just like such an unbelievable um, feeling of me. It's like getting misgendered, I guess. Like the, yeah. whatever exists of me in your mind is so fucking different than what I would have assumed you would have thought of me. That's just insane to me. But okay. I, that's, yeah. I guess that's just my feeling, I guess. Now I'm in my yeah, feelings, okay? <laughs> you're like, it, like, it's unfair. That's fine. Uh, you're like, like, it's unfair. Like, you're kind of upset. Like, why would my friend take my words over my, like, why would you take my words or like the implications of what you think my words are Sorry. over my obvious <laughs> mm -hmm. like, no! I think that that's super fair. Banning vet. Thanks for fucking validating my fucking feelings, okay? Does <laughs> so he just, Kyla, if you're listening, he just said, okay, thank you for Sorry. validating my fucking feelings. Like, you just, like, is that the end of the, you want me to keep going? Keep going. That, that's the after part, after the, okay, you're validating on. my fucking feelings part. Okay. It doesn't make me feel any better, but thanks. Okay. I know it doesn't you make you feel any better, uh, but sure. I, I think, like, this is a different conversation, and I think mm. that this is actually a really valuable conversation, right? Because I don't, I don't, if you're, like, if we go back to the aesthetic one, if you're just saying, well, I can't do anything about the aesthetic, that's just is what it is, and I don't really care, that's fine. Right. But the second conversation is, I don't really like that my friend would assume something so like, like nasty of me when she should know better because she knows me. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a really important conversation. And in fact, like this is ex like this is an expressly important conversation. Like Nick and I have had this exact conversation in the past where like he was like, I wish you could just like not just hear like my words and the possible implications of what it could sound like, mm -hmm. but that you would like take my words into context of who you know me to be. I think that's a very important conversation to have with somebody. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> he just asked you anything else after you talked about I, your neck. Yeah, you, so go all the way till after I leave the call and then listen to like one of his comments after, yeah, okay, on, after as well. Yeah. Wait, what did I say after? Just exist. Absolutely okay, you're gone. You just destroyed. left. Don't ever let her come back and think she can do anything, okay? <laughs> but get annihilated on my stream. True. <sighs> what did I right. say later? So I'm guessing you heard the piss baby comment and stuff. Oh, good. The annihilated comment? True. Uh, yeah, and me calling him a piss baby. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, yeah, I just called him a blue-haired piss baby. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay, so is that what you wanted me to watch? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure you saw all of that context <sighs> first so that you knew... The, the struggle is real with the emotions. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. 